Good evening. Welcome. It's wonderful to be on Gino's spot. Relax, sit down. Coming out of PE town. Got a drink, find a shot. Never mind your liver. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle. And exercise your middle. Have a Gino shot. Gino shot. Get to Gino's spot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Center Stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on the Saturday night to, to Gino's spot. I am uh, Winifred Rump from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen with ex Inexplicable Taste. It's legit. That's what I am. And I'm here tonight because we have a lot of coffee on the go. So I hope all the coffee aficionados are here tonight. The coffee snobs, uh, as we like to call them in the club. You know. Uh, lovely to have you all aboard. I hope you've all got a little drink to, uh, to warm up with, with the coffee, you know, obviously you can't have, you know, coffee without a little bit of, a bit of a squeak here and there, you know. Uh, good evening, everybody. Put in the comments, put, put in the comments what you, what you enjoy, your, your favorite coffee shop, whatever you want. You can put it in the comments, just say hello. Tell us where you're, you're watching from, you, you lazy old buggers. Cheers. Thank you very much to, to Fitch and Leeds. For giving us a few little drinkies to have as well, and, and obviously sponsoring the show. Our sponsors, Fitch and Leeds, uh, bespoke mixer for, for the quiet taste. You know, the, the bespoke mixer for a bespoke gentleman, just like me. Uh, bespoke means, of course, that you have a lot of, you speak a lot. Uh, that's what it means. Uh, also, Spa, thank you very much to Spa for, for supporting us uh, through these dire times of need. Uh, and, uh, and of course, Amubia, Amubia. Hello, Mike Bowen. Love to have you aboard. I tasted some of your chili the other day. They burned a hole in my ring, let me tell you. <laughs> what? Holy Capelloni! You did warn me. You did warn me. He warned me about his habanero chilies. And I had a little, just a little bit of, uh, ring sting, shall we say. Now, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I am here because we are coffee snobs tonight. We are looking at the coffee. And we have Sean Apius in the studio, one of our speciality coffee connoisseurs. And of course, we have uh, all, we, we've traveled around town. We've actually had a nice look at all the different people that are involved in coffee. Well, uh, most, uh, hopefully, a lot of them, because uh, there's so many in town, we, uh, we couldn't, certainly couldn't get to everybody all at once. Uh, but uh, put, put your comments in, 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 put your comments in the comments. Don't be scared. Hello, Rinda Ferreira. Lovely to see you as well. It's beautiful to have you here too. Uh, and uh, let me just tell you a little story. I was at the coffee shop and uh, a little Italian chap was around. Hello, love coffee as long as it's good coffee. You're damn right. You know, it's nothing worse than a crappy cup of coffee. And we're going to tell you tonight, don't worry, Marinda Ferreira, we will school you tonight on how to pick that perfect cup of coffee. Indeed. You know, and I was just at the coffee shop the other day. It was, uh, hello, it's me, and I was popping down the road there as well. And Vuvdello, you know, we go to all of them. And uh, there was an Italian chap there, and he had a little scooter and a little beard. You know, that's what they like. You know, they like the, these coffee people. They like their beards. Uh, and everything is uh, home uh, made. You know, it's like it's like this new the new fandangle thing is to do everything yourself. It's a creative process indeed. Uh, you know, and, uh, and so I I was in my Jaguar, of course. And I, um, I pulled up the robots there, the uh, traffic lights at 8th Avenue, Uma, and I, uh, next to me comes this little Italian chap. And he must have only been about 5 foot 5, you know, not a big chap at all. And a uh, beardy chap, very uh, vocal, you know. 
And uh, he pulled up next to me on his little Vespa scooter, and I was in my Jaguar, of course. <laughs> so I thought I'd give him a bit of a rev, you know. So I put my foot down, and uh, off I went, whoom, away, you know. Well, let me tell you, about two seconds later, he came whipping past me and made a whoop, like, like I was standing still. So I just I changed up gears, and I put my foot in it with that V8, just, I just growled at him, you know, good old British engineering, way past him again on the road, you know, before we even got to Warmer Park, and, uh, and as I got to Warmer Park, so this chap came screaming past me again, you know, and I, I just, what, what the hell's going on? Eventually we caught up with each other and they, and they came back at me. He came back at me, you know, so quickly. And a head on collision. And I, I said to him, you know, he climbed off his motorcycle. was a bit damaged at the time. And he, I said to him, how on earth? How on earth did you get here? Did you, I was... You know, I was trying to get my damnedest to get away from you. And he, and he he came around. He was a bit dazed, you know. He, and he just came up to me and he said, Do you mind unclipping my... Uh, do you mind unclipping my straps from your rear, from your side mirrors? Yeah! <laughs> that was the problem with those little Italian buggers. You never know. Hello, Brian Wilkinson. Lovely to have you aboard. Really, we've got Mark Telford, oh, Mark a Java indeed, you know. The old days, of course, we used to sail around with our in the British Navy and uh, pop into all these lovely places. Stephen Pierce says, hello, mate, as well. And Ryan McGoogle, oh, I didn't know that you had the same name as our town. Uh, Ryan, uh, it's fantastic to have uh, someone from the Google Geek here as well. And uh, Suzette Ludeke, oh, I love a Seattle coffee. Very nice, you know. American, though, you know, which is, you know, well, uh, yeah, well for myself, I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's give it a little bit of a rev. We're going to do a song for you. Let's do it. I, when I drink coffee, I get a little bit uh, feverish. Feverish! So we'll do some fever. I like this song. I like this song. Ah. <laughs> Here we go. Welcome to Gino's Spot, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Hum, 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 he am go. Hum, 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 he am go. Hum, 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 he am go. Hum, hum, hum. Oh, into the night street. In the cool of the evening, I can feel your body who rise to meet me. The night is a promise. I feel it through the cold. Young and hungry on the streets. Where's the commentary? Watching the school. Fever, fever, fever. Marinda Ferreira, how'd you know? How'd you know? Love and coffee as long as it's good coffee. Go hum, hum, hum. Ryan Makakuku rum, hum, hum. Market Delford, num, num, num. Go hum, hum, hum. Oh! Into the night, I'm walking through the night. To the night, I'm walking to the night. Right back to Cookie and the ultimate fruit. The best and old cafe. Walking to I don't know where. Watching the nine to fivers. Struggling to get their share. The night is young, the time is right. That's Teresa Axel Sir. And the wimpy coffee, best coffee they say. Oh, with evil, oh, fever. Ryan Janssen from Fever, fever, fever. I'm walking to the night street. Fever, fever, fever. Oh, I'm walking here. Oh, I'm. Ham, ham, yam, go, ham, 
ham, ham, ham, go ham, 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 go ham, ham, ham. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Chino's spot. Bloody marvelous to have you all aboard tonight. Mocking do that night. There we go. Oh, lovely to have you all aboard. Let me take this off. This is it's hot tonight. It's hot despite the massive thunderstorm we had last night. It is still hot in Port Elizabeth. Well, in Gibbacher, indeed. Let me put that down. There we go. All right, and uh, of course we have uh, we have our usual tonight. We have uh, our 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 journey into Netflix and Prime and and uh, a cable TV, basically our new thing, internet TV in South Africa. Isn't it wonderful? You know, it's just like the old days, but with better viewership. That's right. It's Netflix and all sorts of things getting the computer sorted out. Kyle, squishy grieber, 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 grieber. Are you guys in for a caffeinated treat tonight? Indeed. Sean is here tonight. And let me tell you, if there's anybody that's, I don't think there's anybody that's more passionate about coffee than Sean. And he knows what's happening out there. He's trained, uh, he's trained half the country, uh, half our baristas in the country. And so we, we're going to have some great fun. We've got, as you can see, we've got some brewing tools and all sorts of stuff. It's going to go down tonight. But first of all, we're going to go across to Darren. Darren is our watcher watching expert. Let's have a look at what she has to say. Hi, guys. So clearly, um, once again, this is not live. Um, and I am in my office. Um, this is a lab coat. Um, I was down in the labs earlier, and I think it makes me look more intelligent. So I'm keeping it. So, guys, um, I see that the topic for this week is coffee. I'm just kidding. It's, it's empty. It's empty. I feel like a character on a show now, pretending that I'm actually drinking coffee. Anyway, so considering um, that this week's topic is coffee, I thought, why not talk about movies with coffee themes? Tragically, there aren't that many films with coffee themes. So, I am going to mention the two films that I did find that seemed quite interesting. And then also just facts to do with really common, um, popular films that relate to coffee. Yeah. Yeah, that's all in the thing. Okay, so one movie that I have seen is called Coffee Shop. It's from 2014. It's a very cute hallmarky rom-com with Laura Vandervoort. Vandervoort? Vandervoort? Yeah. She was in Smallville as uh, Supergirl. Very cute, very lovely. Um, it's a rom-com, you know, she owns a coffee shop. Uh, there's a cute guy. There's a lot of coffee. There's a barista. It's very cute and coffee themed. Watch that. Um, then also, okay, uh, when it comes to uh, coffee-related facts and films, Amelie is one of my favorite films. It's gorgeous. It's so lovely. It's a French film, um, basically about this girl that's really, um, she doesn't really connect with people very well, but, um, well, she's just a little antisocial, but she's very sweet, and she finds all these she finds such cute things in, in, in small details. And um, anyway, so this one scene, she's trying to get this couple together and she decides the best way to do that is to spill uh, scalding hot coffee on them. <laughs> anyway, it does work. It's very cute. Watch the movie. It has coffee in it. Um, then, ooh, okay, so guys, David Lynch, um, obviously David Lynch, very famous director, um, very tiny bit cuckoo, but cuckoo in a good way. So David Lynch did Twin Peaks um, and Mulholland Drive, which is one of my favorite films. I had to study it for film. Um, very crazy, uh, very confusing. I love a good confusing film. That being said, I hope you watch it behind your eyes and you are traumatized. Um, so David Lynch, um, he is so obsessed with coffee that he actually created his own brand. And you'll see in any of his films, he usually mentions coffee, quality coffee. He has a character spitting out coffee. So yes, coffee related, David Lynch. Watch Mulholland Drive, it's very confusing. The Usual Suspects, um, if you haven't watched that yet, um, it's an amazing film, it's so complicated. It has um, amazing actors in it. Director is questionable now, but Brian Singer. But um, The Usual Suspects, a very good film. It has a very interesting uh, mo moment with a coffee, with a coffee cup. <laughs> watch the movie, very good, Usual Suspects. Um, let's see. Ooh, 
breakfast at Tiffany's. Guys, look, I adore Audrey Hepburn. Um, she is my favorite person to have ever existed. And if I had just been born three days earlier, I would have been born on her birthday. Yeah, May 4th. Mine's May 7th, not to mention I would have been born on Star Wars Day. Anyway, so Audrey Hepburn, Breakfast at Tiffany's. The scene opens up with this absolutely beautiful, classy Audrey Hepburn coming up to look at um, Tiffany's, looking at the sparkling diamonds with a takeaway coffee. And only Audrey can make that look classy as hell. And then finally, a movie I found whilst researching this very topic is called Coffee Town. It looks so delightful. It has Glenn Howerton in it, which I know is not necessarily a well-known name, but he was in that 80s show, which I absolutely adored. I don't know if you guys have seen that 80s show, obviously follow up to that 70s show. It didn't gain as much uh, notoriety, but I loved it. That it was great. And he's also in, I think, Sunny, Sunny, it's always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, it looks so ador so adorbs. It's got Josh Groban in it. It's about this guy that essentially has his, uh, he keeps his office at a coffee shop and then he realizes they want to close it to make a bar and he fights the system to keep his coffee office open. Anyway, guys, it looks charming. So yes, that's pretty much me for the week. Other than that, um, I've just been watching a hell of a lot of Bones. If you want to rewatch Bones, I still suggest it. So thanks, guys. Have a fantastic day. Lovely to see you, albeit digitally. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> oh, very nice indeed, Darren Fuller. Thank you very much. Uh, um, and, and today I'm, I, must, I must just do a little shout out to Dr. Desetta because uh, at, uh, at the Eye and Laser Clinic today, I went to do an eye. He did an operation on my eye. His eye, and and uh, and I can still see out it, and it's all beautiful. Uh, what a what a great doctor! Um, so uh, I'm I'm happy that I'm still alive and, and and here to do this show tonight because this is a show that um, that's kind of close to my heart. I'm a coffee coffee maniac. I love coffee, and um, one of the guys that that got me into when when, when I when I got into coffee as a hobby, uh, for one of the first guys I met was Sean Apias. And Sean, welcome to the studio. Come in, come in, young man. I see you've got we've got a whole lot of stuff going down here as well. All right, we should have um, some, some microphones here too. Fantastic. There we go. I hope we, hope we can hear us. There we go. All right, so we are, we're in. We're in the studio, the coffee studio. Might have to move the camera a little bit to get it in, get it in, a, in, the, in the middle in the middle there. Let's move it. Uh, uh, it's actually this way, isn't it? <laughs> it's actually this side. Okay, well let's done. go. There we go. That's actually better. Yeah. Um, Sean, awesome. fantastic to have you in the studio. I, I mean, awesome. I, I was, um, you know... I, because I'm, I'm a coffee lover, and I know there are lots of coffee lovers, lots of coffee snobs out there. Too many. Hello, Vivian. How's it? How's it? That's why I bounce. That's why I bounce. Yes, it's true. That's why I bounce around. It's true, because of the coffee. And uh, <laughs> my, my machine, uh, I, I, my, my first introduction was that I, I bought this machine, yeah. and I wanted to do latte art. Yeah, I remember and, that. And I, and I came to you because I was just in the dire straits. I didn't know what, I couldn't get this latte art working. How do you make it work? And Sean was the one that, that showed me amongst a, a couple of other people because there's a lovely, there's a lovely coffee uh, community here in PE. Yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely. You know, the one thing I can say about Port Elizabeth is a lot of people travel around the country that I encounter on a, on a coffee basis. And yeah. When they come home, they say there's no place like home when it comes to the coffee community. Yeah. I think the coffee community is uh, tightly woven. Yes. Um, it's a nice group of people, phenomenal people that you've got coming up in the show that you're going to share. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, very excited just to to really promote um, the culture of coffee in uh, Krabeja. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the fact that yes, yeah, well done. That's a good. That's that was a good, good. one. Krabeja, Krabeja. We 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 try and we try and we try and we try and our luck here. With that, um, but you know the, the, uh, the coffee, like you're saying now, um, the fact that everybody sort of works together because the coffee, there's there's more than enough to go around. There's more than enough coffee business to go around. Yeah. And um, and and uh, so so everybody if everybody helps each other like as they do yeah. in PE particularly it it, it, helps, mm. it, uh, it does drive the entire industry which then yeah. gets things going. Yeah, definitely. Um, and now I mean, how did you get into coffee? Sure. So, 2006, I started in the industry, um, yeah. working with uh, Sumatran. 
Sumatran. So, yeah, yes, indeed. It was, Sum- it was Sumatran Pride, I believe, yeah, before Sumatran then. Sumatran no? Pride Coffee, originally yeah. owned by, well, a couple owners, but the yeah. owner I started with was Cheryl Morton. Okay, okay. And, but very much into the beginning of that, within the first year, Deirdre and her family yes. came into the business. Okay. And so, yeah, I was working with Deirdre for a long time and the team there. And had you got well, into it before? I mean, had you, had you no, enjoyed not coffee? No, coffee drinker so, not? No, not really. So the funny part was, I just, um, you know, Donovan uh, McLaggan? Yes, was of course, Donovan. Working for the... Sumatra and Pride before me. Okay, Urban and, Express, and, that's Urban Express. And what's interesting is, I was just visiting the guys, actually trying to sell them products in the okay. packaging industry. Packaging industry. Yeah, okay, and, okay. and the funny part is that that's kind of how it started, where okay. I just started hanging out with the guys on Fridays, tasting coffees. Yeah. It was so fantastic. It was something that I, I realized, wow, it's it's it can be so much more than just a job. It can yeah. actually end up being something that gives you something to wake up in the morning for other than the fact that caffeine, caffeine will help you through the yes, day. Yes. But something I really enjoyed, like when I started tasting and really experiencing it. So yeah. I grew up in the culture of, you know, uh, Frisco and yes, you know, yeah, yeah. So it's, and, you and, and, it. and you know, I grew yeah. up with that and something I didn't really enjoy, but um, I've pretty much my whole life been more of a tea drinker. Yeah, I still enjoy my tea, yeah, freshly yeah. infused teas, oh, right. um, because it's all flavor to me, yeah. and flavor and balance and the experience that you have when you drink it and what you enjoy yeah. about it. And if you're going to drink something, you must enjoy it, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah. the beauty about coffee is, coffee is so much more than a beverage. It comes yeah. with a story. It comes with people that are behind the scenes that we never see. Yes. And the beauty about that is I've got to experience that around South Africa. I've got to experience that in Africa. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just been a phenomenal, phenomenal journey. That, that's that's so true because yeah. I mean, we, we'll, we'll start with all that, uh, the, the, the production and the whole thing just now because yeah. it's, a, it's a story. It's, almost, it's like wine. It's so much like yeah. wine in, yeah. in terms of that, the growing, the, the brewing, the, 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 the roasting, you know. So, um, I mean, did, did Donovan, uh, Donovan is, a, is uh, I know, we, we try, I tried to get him to do a thing, he was, he was, he was shy, so he didn't yeah. want to go, but Donovan is amazing, I'm sure he yeah. probably drove a lot of your passion in the beginning. I want to tell you something, Donovan was always there to kick me in the ass, no matter <laughs> what I did, um, you know, I'll never forget, we went to the Coffee Champs in 2012 in, in, in Cape Town, and yes. I was an absolute nervous wreck, it was the first national competition I was competing in with Latte Art. Yeah. And Donovan and Ange were there the whole step of the way, encouraging me, telling me, yeah. you're going to do well. I uh, oh, did man. disastrously. <laughs> um, but at the end, they told me I stuffed up. And, yeah, yeah, but yeah. we move on. Yeah, and we a, grow from that. And I realized that I'm not a great competitor, yeah. but I love coaching. I yeah. love training. I love mentoring. And so okay. that for me is, does it mean I'll ever compete again? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've kind of said to a couple of guys that my aim would be probably at the age of 50. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> okay, you little, want to do it. It's a little <laughs> bit away. No, but, I mean, just, just no. to say that, that when he's talking about competing, there are these, these amazing competitions. And uh, Angeline and, and Donovan from Urban, uh, Urban yeah. Express. Uh, Angeline worked work for Syro as well for, yeah. for a while. She, for a while. she did a, She trained myself and, and, and my son Chelsea as well, which was which was mm. such great fun. We did a three day course, um, but I mean these competitions are, are quite uh, they, intense. They, they're yeah. intense. Yeah. Uh, the baristas that are out there they go for these competitions mm. and they, and they've got to produce a, um, a certain amount of coffees. Mm. Or what, what, how does it work? It's it's three. Uh, yeah, there's three different competitions. So the main barista competition is a competition where you are serving twelve different drinks. Yeah. to seven judges you have 15 minutes yeah. and it's a very intense competition because it's not only about what you are presenting in terms yeah. of the brand of coffee or the the country of coffee yeah. but you are also presenting yourself as a barista so it's very similar to like a barman style of competition where yeah. you are you sharing your passion for coffee but more importantly yes. the journey the coffee's taken to that table yeah then the second competition is the latte art competition um yeah. i've been very involved in the south african latte art community for a yes. long time i've had judged i've, I've competed yes. i've done a variety of things the latte art competition gives you the ability to be able to express your artistic passion for coffee yeah, yeah. where you're gonna you'll see just now obviously if we get those little inserts of we yes. played around earlier doing a teddy bear and an elephant yes, yes. and then the cup tasters competition so the cup tasters comp what's interesting yeah. with that is it's a competition where your palate is okay. basically being oh, yeah, tested. tested. Okay. So for the last two years, myself and Chris Burke have yeah. actually run the Cup Tasters competition okay. around South Africa, yeah. where we actually involved in the roasting process, we're involved in the blending process, we're involved in setting up the cups, 
and it's three cups in front of you, eight sets, and one of the cups out of the set of three is the odd one out. Okay. And you have to isolate the odd one out. Jeez, okay. So it's a test of your palate, basically. Yeah. So see how it's, it works. It's, a, it's an amazing comp. So there's there's so many. Uh, I see this talking about flavors there. Yeah. Viv, Viv is asking why people like flavored coffees. I don't know. Give me a coffee flavor, mm. coffee flavored coffee any day. <laughs> yeah, look, you know, it's interesting that. Uh, you know, Sumatran, we, yeah. we started, um, when I started there, they had flavoured coffees from, yeah. from the get-go. And, yeah. you know, your Amarula cream yes. and your variety of flavours. And I think it's really a case of being able to enjoy a great cup of coffee that has an amazing flavour in it yeah. that is not necessary like that alcohol, you know. So yeah. it doesn't have the Amarula, it doesn't have the Kahlua, yeah. but it's got that flavour in it. And yeah. the interesting process is that flavor is basically absorbed into the bean while the yeah. bean is still hot. So oh, wow. once the beans are dropped out of the, the drum okay. and they, they will toss the beans in the syrup. Yeah. Oh, I see. And it, I mean, coffee is incredibly porous. If yes. you leave, you, I don't know if you've ever left coffee in the fridge and you've left onions open. Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, no, it's a disaster. And it, it really yeah, impacts yeah. the quality and the flavor of the coffee. So the, the beauty about something like Irish cream, vanilla, yeah. Kahlua fudge, yes. you know. It, is, is it a is beginner's it coffee? Yeah, I mean, so people that haven't haven't really got into the coffee is but bitter for them, and they're starting it for the first time. Maybe a, a, a yeah. vanilla coffee is, yeah. is maybe it takes that edge off. Let's just yeah. say that you know the, the 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 culture out there. I think in the industry right now is milk and two sugars. Yeah, that's kind of like the the, the benchmark or the base that a coffee shop sets their costings at. You yes, say that. Yes. With something like hazelnut or vanilla or Kahlua. It, it's really a case of having a coffee and, and just adding to the experience. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with a flavored coffee. I don't think yeah. there's anything wrong with people adding sugar to coffee or milk to coffee. Yeah. You must enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. Um, yes, quality coffee, fresh coffee, yeah. buying from a local roaster, yeah. um, supporting local people, the local community, a great thing. It and especially important. when the coffee has some sort of traceability, like yeah. you know it, it comes out of Africa, it's coming from this specific yeah. farm, or it comes out of Brazil and it's coming yeah. from this region. It's, you know, yeah. it's so much more, it adds to your experience as a coffee drinker. It's not just about the cup anymore, yeah. it's about the whole, the holistic experience yes. of drinking coffee, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. Let's, let's go on to a little, uh, little clip here. I've got a, I've got a clip of, um, of Sumatran, I thought maybe yeah. we start awesome. with the Sumatran guys. And, and uh, Deidre and, and Claire, I, I absolutely <laughs> love them, they, they, sh they showed, Deidre got it right with me with the milk. She showed me how to get that milk right for the latte mm. art. Mm. Let's, let's have a quick look at what <laughs> we put together here. People that I've known since I got involved in, in interested in coffee are it's a family-run business. Uh, it is Claire and Deirdre and and of course Jay who works on the machines at Sumatran Sumatran Coffee. So we're going to go and have a quick word with Deirdre. Let's see what she's got to say. So we're at some Sumatran Sumatran Pride. It used to be another Sumatran now with Deirdre. Yes. <laughs> Deirdre is here. Too. She she actually came all the way from East London. Originally. I did, I did many, many years ago, 24 <laughs> years ago. I know, I, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, and we love East, East London, we've got some East London people watching, I'm quite sure. So <laughs> how's it to this, the Slummies Oaks? And um, you know, I came down here, um, obviously started a, started a coffee, coffee business, you, did you buy into it? It's actually a strange, funny little story yeah. because um, I never used to drink coffee. I used to drink instant coffee if I had coffee and it was half a teaspoon because it was so strong. Yeah, me too. Also, and, it, yeah, later on in life. Yeah, so strange. Yeah. And um, I was actually starting a new job in November of 2007. Yeah. And I was at book club, it was October, beginning of October 2007. Book club. A book, no, 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 a proper uh, book club uh, in those no, days. No, no, no. We had to read. <laughs> We did a little bit of, but mostly reading. Yes. Anyway, and, and there was a new lady who had joined, and she came in and she said, I'm so excited. My husband and I have decided to sell this horrible coffee business we've had. Um, <laughs> we, we came all the way down from Joburg to, to buy in and to, to work together, and we just can't work with each other. We don't care each other. So I'm so pleased we're now selling it. Oh, and I just started asking questions. I've never had my own yeah. business. started asking questions. And I got home that night and I said to my husband, I woke up, Tony, 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 I've got something to tell you. 
And he said, okay, great, yes, go ahead, yes, you bite. And the next morning I woke up and he woke up and he said, uh, are you serious about my <laughs> coffee business? You don't even drink coffee. And I said, well, yes, actually, it, it got yeah. me so excited. And I can't yeah. tell you why, because I wasn't looking for a business. I was starting a new job, yeah. very excited. And It's an interesting even, field though. That's why oh, I think it you go into coffee and it's like, whoa. What, yes. And once you realize how many aspects of coffee there are and yes. how, many, how many different ways you can do something yeah. and get a completely different taste. Absolutely. And that is what's so, and you, you never learn everything there is to know. I know. Because it's continually evolving and things are changing and people are, are finding different ways of doing things. New and, brewing, and new Absolutely. roasting, whatever, you know. So you, you're continually learning, yeah. which, is, which, is, which is lovely. You never get to a stagnant place yes. where, where you feel, oh, I now know it all. And, and uh, I mean, now you, you guys are wholesale and you're you to the public as yes, well. Yes, you sell all these, to the all these uh, the, 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 the different machines. Yes. You do, I think, so you do Jura we stuff do, as yeah, well. Yeah, we do the bean to cup machines for home use. We do industrial machinery. We do slow joe products. We do smoothies. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, we do our coffee. And the coffee as uh, well. Our tell, coffee. Uh, our coffee. tell me yes. about your the, the way that you see the coffee. I mean, you, do, do you order in directly as well? So we don't import ourselves. We okay. buy from the importer. Okay. And with every season, yeah. every every uh, batch, if you want to call it batch, but every crop yeah. has different characteristics from the previous, and yeah. slightly different characteristics from the previous Crop yeah. Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as they like get a new crop, it's, like it's exactly like wine. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's why I enjoy wine as well so much yeah. because it goes well. Um, <laughs> the book club. But the book club. Yeah, now we've got a different book club. Um, so basically, what they do is they send us a list of their current offerings, yeah. and then we decide right we're looking for a Tanzanian to do this kind of blending with, okay. um, and then we'll order a whatever. We're, it depends. Yeah, so yeah. we'll decide, right, we're going to look, go with the Tanzania and we want a really good quality, so we'll go with the double A bean, which is just the grading okay. of the bean. So you're grading screen, the beans as well. There's grading of the bean, there's wow. screen size, and it all adds to um, the type of coffee you end up yeah. with. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, and then, so then what we do is we order in our 60 yeah. to 70 kg bags of oh, green big, coffee, big but then we sample roast them. We roast them in 300 gram batches, Yes. Um, and then we do, we do tastings. So we'll do tastings on day one, day three, day seven okay. to see how the coffee changes over that time okay. as it's degassed. Yes. Um, and then also we okay, so because right. after the roasting you leave it to you, the gas you leave to it, degas. You leave yeah. it to degas to get. I don't. I just go straight in. Straight in. <laughs> just, just try. Do yourself okay. a favor. Take a batch and just yeah. do it after day one, day three, day seven. Okay. And I mean, there's one particular coffee that we found was pre. It, it was at the top of its game yeah. after the thirteenth day. Wow. And I mean that's. To us, really anything in our store is never older than, than, than yeah. 10 days to 14 days. Yeah. Um, so after we, we, we watch out our cycles and we roast yes. according to need. And, and the, yeah, the, um, the correct quantities. That absolutely, must be, it's, because it's you, cannot, you cannot have coffee standing around yes. for, for two months or yeah. even for a month. It's yeah. just a no-no. Well, they say 15, the home users. 15 months green, 15, uh, 15 days uh, yes. beans, yes. 15 minutes, minutes. ground. Absolutely. Ground. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, okay. you know, so, and then what we do is uh, once we've done our sample roasting and we've done our, our tastings, yeah. our cupping, um, we then, to develop a blend, we'll take something with uh, a certain type of acidity, another yeah. one with the body, another one with an aftertaste. Yeah. Um, Blend, start with two, add a third one until we're happy yeah. with the, the, the cup taste, taste okay. for a filter air extraction or a, or a plunger extraction. Yeah. And often what you develop for filter extraction works doesn't work very well with an, if you use yes. it through an espresso machine. Of course, yes. Because the extraction processes are so different. It's coarser or it's, finer. It's, it is. So coarser with the plunger, yes. finer with the, with the espresso, espresso machine. machine yeah. because it and can so it has a lot to do with the, the amount of time that your water comes into contact with your coffee. Okay. So that also has a lot of uh, yeah. a, a impact on the type of bean you're going to use to get a, a good cup taste. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You were just saying 300, uh, 300 grams a time for the thing because I know yes. I bought your old you uh, did, roast. Yes, and you nearly smoked your house yes, out. I, did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> so so yes, that yes. does about 300 at it a time. Does. It's perfect yeah. for me. Thank you very much. It's for a that. pleasure. <laughs> And I know Jay, Jay, um, oh uh, Claire's, yes. Claire's husband works mm -hmm. here as well, does the machines and he's done a beautiful job on my 
on my machine as well. Yeah, I'm yes, very yes. happy. Yeah. Um, and so no, he's an absolute whiz with the machines. I tell you what, yeah. we're, so, we're so very fortunate to have him on board. Yeah, and it's yeah. he's very much he's a bit OCD, you know. He is, hey? he, he is. Hey? Yeah, oh, that's the I perfect tell you what. I love it. So Otherwise, love it. it doesn't work. He knows. <laughs> But so yeah. thank you so much, so much and uh, oh, it's an best of luck and right here in Warmer, beautiful yes. place to be. Uh, I love it. Yes, thank absolutely. you. Thank you for interviewing us. It's a pleasure. Would you like to be part of your what is it? A, a show. A show. <laughs> a show. My absolutely. show of yes. <laughs> the show indeed. <laughs> now, she she was touching on something very interesting stuff there and um yeah. particularly with, with the palate and, and, and having your um mixing your coffees yeah. for, for your for certain brewing methods. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there are, there's a lot of uh, coffee, uh, it can be brewed in various ways. And, yeah. and you're saying that, that those beans are specifically ground and made or, or, or even uh, yeah. roasted for that. Yeah, you look a lot, of, you know, Deirdre made a very, very important statement. And that is choosing the right coffee for the right application yeah. based upon flavor, flavor, taste, balance. I mean, okay. she spoke about acidity, yeah. sweetness, sourness, bitterness. A lot of the time we just choose something off the shelf that we yeah. actually haven't put some thought to yeah. and we haven't actually we just buy it for the sake of buying it because it has a name like Mocha Java yes. or it has oh, a name John. like Mocha Java is the one the, <laughs> yeah. the thing is all those coffees come with a story they yeah. Mocha Java uh, is a very very popular blend that actually was formulated it's Mocha the port of Mocha Ethiopia yeah. Java Java Colossi Indonesia it's a blend okay. It should be a blend in Ethiopia and Indonesia. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't so even know actually, that. Yeah, so it's interesting. Like, I mean, a lot of people say they will use like Yemen because yeah. uh, that's obviously where it's coming on, on, on the top of Africa. Yeah. But it's it's just a popular blend. Vienna Michon, another popular blend that's just okay. developed through the ages. Um, Blue Mountain. Yes. Interesting. Blue Mountain, they formulated a blend and they make, but Blue Mountain's actually originally from the Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee. Okay. Which okay. is a coffee that has grown on a very, very high level, and it's one of the right. top five most expensive coffees in the world. Wow. Okay. Really. So, so the Blue yeah. Mountain should be good. It's, well, look, <laughs> if it's a Blue Mountain blend, yes, you yes. obviously don't know don't what know. Okay. different origins are coming yeah. into the coffee, but everybody brings their own touch, their yeah. own feel, their own blend, the variety that comes together. Whether they stick to the authenticity of it, yeah. a lot of people do. I know with a lot of the brands. When they blend a mocha java, yeah. they try use an Ethiopian and, uh, Indonesia or Yemen okay. and Indonesia. It depends if you can get your hands on it because yeah. Yemenese coffee is very difficult to get your hands okay. on. Okay. Very, very, very difficult because yeah. it's it's a very popular coffee because Yemen and Ethiopia are the birthplace yes. of, of coffee. Ethiopia is well, maybe, maybe let's start at the beginning. Mm. There, I mean, definitely Ethiopia, the birthplace of coffee bean, yeah. um, and uh, I mean. Uh, it does it grow? At a, I mean, it seems to be high, high altitude. Is that yeah. is that the one to get? So the whole thing is, if you look across the map, and if yeah. you lay the, the map out, they call it the coffee belt. Yeah. So it's either side of the equator, specific okay. distance, and that is optimal when it comes to growing coffee because right. you're looking at the perfect climate. Okay. So yes, altitude plays a massive role in that, but the climate itself. Okay. So. When our, in 2018, when we launched the Barista Academy um, in Uganda, we launched it on the Nile in Ginger. Wow. If you yeah. look on the map, it's yeah. on the equator. Okay. Ah, let's just say, sweated in places yes. we should not talk about. <laughs> it's a bit hot, eh? It was just a, a tad hot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sleeping at night, it. yeah, like and sleeping humidity. at night with, with the aircon on like 16, Jeez, and yeah. I'm still sweating. Yeah. You know, taking additional shirts to train, <laughs> walk, it's just incredibly, incredibly hot. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. coffee thrives in that climate. So, okay. you must remember, coffee is a fruit, which a lot yeah. of people don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a fishy it's, thing, isn't yeah, it? It's grown in a cherry. And the thing is, it needs that climate for that, that the yeah. coffee to, to basically get the right acids and all the stuff, the climate okay. that it's basically grown yeah. in. So, I would say the soil, the, the, the yeah. soil, just like wine, the soil, soil the plays thing. a massive role. Yeah. There's so many aspects that play a massive role in the cultivation of coffee. Yeah. But climate for me and altitude would probably be okay. one of the, great, the greatest. You know, I had the, I didn't have the privilege to go to, um, so you probably heard of Uganda, Mount Elgon. It's yeah. a very, very sippy falls, very okay. well known region. They, they, okay. they process organic coffee. Wow. I didn't have the privilege to go there. I was very, very close. Yeah, but yeah. It being grown at like one and a half thousand meters above sea level, yeah. 
on the slopes by waterfalls. It's, it's yeah. absolutely incredible. Mm. I got to hang out with one of the guys by the name of Samuel that goes there on a weekly basis to purchase sure. coffee. Okay, okay. And, and then actually sits and with the guys in this warehouse yeah. while they were sorting coffee from Mount Elgon. Do they dry it on the farm? Because they have to dry Okay, so, yeah. so they get the, yeah. the, the cherry beans, yeah. they lay them out mm. to dry. Yeah. I mean, in, in huge, I've seen sort of massive yeah. uh, flat areas. Yeah. yeah, there's generally two different methods, two of the popular methods of processing coffee, and that's yeah. washed yeah. and dry method. Oh, okay. Washed is where they take the cherries straight off the, ch the trees, yeah. wash it, strip it and then dry it oh, wow. in the bean form. Okay. Natural is where they dry it in the cherry. In the cherry. So you get additional fermentation. Yes. Then strip it. Okay. And then take oh, it through the process. So, so okay. it's it's very interesting. It all depends. So when you choose a coffee, like when you roast coffee, yeah. what you must do is occasionally buy a variety of different coffees that are look closer and say I want something that's not necessarily washed. I want something that is maybe a naturally processed coffee. Yeah. Where there's a lot of additional fermentation. And then we go one step further where we call honey processed coffee. So a lot of people think, oh, you've used honey. But it's actually the clumps of beans that are stuck together because they've partially depulped it. Sure. Okay. So there's still a little bit of flesh on the bean. Yes, okay. It clumps together and looks like clumps of honeycomb. Yeah. Is it being sweet or sour? I haven't, I haven't tasted it. Look, coffee bean if you yet. take a coffee bean um, on its own in the green form, yeah, you're yeah. going to crack a tooth. Let's uh, just be yeah, honest. Yeah, okay. It's so rock, 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 rock hard. hard yeah. It's when you roast it and it expands uh, and it, it becomes brittle. I actually did that by mistake. I put some uh, mm. some green beans in my mm. in my uh, grinder and it yeah. <laughs> that, that was a great nice. idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want uh, honesty when it comes to coffee, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so so the, the, uh, then the green bean is, it's it's not dry it's not dry completely. It's it has still got some. It still has a moisture content in it. So okay. when a coffee comes fresh from a farm, you're probably looking at approximately ten to twelve percent moisture content that's okay. still within that bean. They need to when they strip it. A lot of the time when they've stripped it, they check the moisture content as it drops. And then before they bag it, they will get it to a certain point. Because the problem is, if it's beyond, let's say, 12 or 13%, yep. you're going to potentially end up with mold. Oh, okay, and okay. you're going to okay, end sure. up getting okay. like, like In the rocks. bags. Yeah, in yeah, the bags. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And the worst thing you can do is that. Because basically, you can take an entire 60 kg bag of coffee and throw it away. Yeah, gee whiz. And yeah. how long does a bag of coffee like that actually last, sitting, sitting oh. like that? Look, when you buy from one of the merchants or you go to the lo yeah. local guys, some of the bags generally will have a date on it. Okay. Most of the coffees you want to be buying is in the region of, say, a year, two years, sometimes okay. even three years. Wow. So currently, so the crops that are out there, yeah, 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 five years, up to five years. Wow. I mean, I've roasted a coffee that was five years old. Okay. The thing is, is that it starts to get what we call the, ro the roaster's defect, as they call bagginess. Yeah. So you actually end up getting like, a, must, like a musty taste okay, all right. that comes through the bean when right. you roast it. If it's you a 10 year old bag. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Fair the one thing is, is that like, like Deirdre mentioned the whole 15, 15, 15. Yes. It's so important that you follow that, that chain. Yeah. It's like, you know, with, with fresh produce, you never want to break the cold chain. Yeah. It's the same thing with coffee. There's a, there's a specific chain that you, you want to keep to, to yes. ensure that you always are optimizing quality. quality. Exactly. Quality, exactly. and I, you know, and I always say to, to, to the guys that mm. you, 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 when you're making coffee in your coffee shop, um, yeah. you are the last, you're the last uh, uh, link mm. in that chain. Mm. And those farmers have taken such care in growing that stuff, yeah. and they've dried it, and they've taken it and they washed it, and they've taken, they've got the beans, and they send the beans off, and then the roaster gets gets hold of it, and then the roasting's another whole story. Uh, you know, to, to, to get that, it, it's a, it's a science, yeah. and and um, to get that roast perfect, and everybody gets yeah. that, and then the blend, yeah. then the blend comes, yeah. and they blend those roasts together, and they get this perfect bean, and then the guy in the coffee shop buggers it up. <laughs> you can take the best coffee in the world and destroy it, and you can take the worst coffee in the world and actually make it pretty decent. Yeah, it's. You know, they, when, when you buy a coffee, a lot of the guys don't realize. So if you go to the shop, so number one coffee in the world. So yeah. Ryan McGoo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo
Because Brazil is the biggest producing country in the world. It produces over a third of the world's coffee production. We're looking at about 40 to 50 million bags of 60 kg bags of coffee per year. Jeez, that's a lot. We're of, talking about a lot of coffee. I mean, at one stage, coffee was probably, it was the second biggest commodity in the world at one stage. It has dropped down the list a little okay. bit. And I think it's got a lot to do with what we want and what we need in life. Okay. When it comes to commodities, if you think about it, oil, grain, etc., yeah. etc., coffee at one stage, I think, was far more accessible and well, well priced. And yeah. obviously, as it's come along, it's got a little bit more expensive. It has risen in price over the last couple of years. Yes. But it stayed very, very, very relative, I think. Yeah. And yeah. especially through with with COVID and what happened and how that impacted the industry as a whole. Because you must yeah. remember now all the coffee shops are closed. Yes. So yes, what are people course. doing now? The roasters were able to get their certificates to roast, yeah. to okay. sell the training, coffee, this to do all that now. stuff. And the guys were buying coffee at home and now choosing and using brew methods that yes. are on the back of the cupboard that yeah. they've never used. In a long time, so that's one of yeah. the reasons why I've got a couple of brewing. We've got a brewing methods here, that, that's and that's, yeah. that's fantastic. So let, let's get into the from okay. So from that that uh, that washing process, the beans are in the bag. Mm -hmm. They they get imported to South Africa to Joburg yeah. or wherever, and we get them down here. And then and then all the beardy guys get together and they start roasting mm -hmm. the <laughs> roasting yeah. the stuff. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the roasting sites because I I mean uh, you know I've got my little roaster that I got a uh, little. Mm -hmm barrel that's with a blowtorch mm. but you can do it in a pan yeah if you're good enough Look, I mean, uh, you know the, the thing I like about coffee is there is just so much to to learn of it and and fun of it and yeah. I, I'm constantly encouraging people to go to the point of even buying an air popper yes and, 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 and uh, um, those, those the, popcorn poppers. popcorn popcorn machines they're fantastic for yeah. for, 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 fantastic. Green, for, for I mean, roasting coffee if you if you um if you search back even like on my facebook feed you'll yeah. see um i've been writing for an international coffee magazine called uh, perfect daily grind and i wrote yes. an article on using an air popper to, yeah. to roast coffee and i've okay. got I've got the, I've got a popcorn pop at home, and it's it absolutely amazing. It it does a phenomenal job. The science behind it is coffee goes through three phases in roasting. Okay. Number one is the drying phase, yeah. where you're now removing that additional moisture, moisture content. Okay. The second phase of coffee, the browning phase or malleate phase, yes. is where you are developing body flavor. Um, aroma that's coming out of the coffee. Yeah. Then the third phase of coffee is what we call the caramelization phase. Okay. The caramelization phase is where you are working on the complexity of the coffee, where you're okay. bringing those flavors together. If, okay. Of those three the phases, they're yeah. broken basically into percentages. And okay. getting the percentage of each, each of those phases right okay. the, determines how well you roast your Guatemala, how yeah. well you roast your Brazil. Yeah. And it's so important to find, I say to the guys all the time, you need to find the sweet spot yeah. of a bean. Okay. The perfect percentage of drying, the perfect percentage of malleot, the perfect percentage of caramelization. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with, if you think about acids and sugars when yeah. it comes to, for example, cooking a steak. Yeah. Does the steak go brown because of the heat applied or does the steak go brown because of the, the acids and the sugar reaction? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that. Yeah. Okay, so it's okay, the same okay. thing with coffee. It's, it's, it's reacting like that. I see a question here. Uh, Devet Bjerkes says, uh, is the world running out of coffee or is it a myth? Devet, go away. It's a myth. It's a myth. <laughs> okay. Devet is a, Devet's a very good friend of mine. He, he uh, owns okay. a coffee roastery in Pretoria <laughs> called Red Truck. Um, red truck. Yeah, oh, red nice. truck coffee. Yeah, nice. Nice, nice. indeed, nice. Devet. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging out with Devet on Saturday night over oh, a nice big piece of steak. Oh, nice. Um, nice so, yeah, machine. look, um, you know, I think the world's coffee production is, yeah. is, is gets harmed like with anything when it comes to yeah. climate change and yes. a whole lot of stuff. And obviously, yeah. climate change is going to impact so many different countries. So yeah. one, of the, one of the big things we found pre-COVID in Africa is yeah. because of bad weather, for example, in Africa where there's lots of rain, yes. what happens is you get flooding. Okay, what yeah. happens is you get crop damage. Yeah. So for example, with, with one of the washing stations I work with, Mr. Emmanuel from Baho Coffee, yeah. he lost over 25% of his production because of flooding. Jeez. Now we're talking about 25% of people's income, yeah. their livelihood, their farms that they, they can't supply the cherries to the washing station yes. 
so that coffee can get processed so that those people can get paid. Yeah. yeah. Because the interesting thing with coffee, every farm doesn't have their own washing station to process the okay, coffee. Okay. Farmers normally sell. Yes. Okay, so okay. the we dealing with, for example, like if you want to call it the co-op or the broker or the washing station. Yeah. So when we get coffee like directly from Rwanda, for example, from Baho, we're getting it directly from those different washing stations. Yes, yes. So you know exactly where that coffee's come from. Okay. The problem in the world right now is wow. these things that happen, natural disasters. Yeah. Um, so pre, pre-COVID, to give you an example, Rwanda came out of their, their harvesting season. Mm-hmm. They were supposed to export coffee going yeah. into April, May. Yes. And guess what? All the borders are shut. Oh, of course, of course, with COVID, that's, that's the main, that's so the main issue, is that the borders are Bags, closed. bags, bags, warehouses oh, of coffee, man. sent, farmers didn't sitting, get paid. Sitting, sitting and there, waiting for the, waiting so, for the... So, yeah, that brings up a good question. I mean, yeah. it, it, coffee, coffee can get impacted on so many levels, and, and yes. Is there an insatiable thirst for this stuff? I mean, do those farmers, they just produce yeah. and it's gone. I mean, I Look, don't know. Their, their care and time and attention that they put into their crops. Yes. It's, if they treat their trees well and they look after their crops and they ensure that they don't end up getting insect damage. And, yes. You know, they try to treat their, their, their crop like you would any tree. You know, like yeah. you, 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 you're cutting this beautiful bonsai tree that yeah. you end up with this magical picture. Yes. It's the same thing for them. They, the, the maximum amount of yield they get out of one tree okay. puts more money in their back pocket. So it's, it's, it's such an important step that we don't realize. We don't realize that, that hardship yeah. And, yeah. And, and that energy. That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, this whole uh, uh, trade thing, what, what do they call it? Uh, with, with, where they've got to look after the workers, they've got to look after the... Yeah, fair trade. Fair trade, yeah. fair yeah. trade so stuff. I mean, there are different organizations around the world that have basically helped to empower the farmers to help yeah. them get better prices for their... Yeah. You must understand that a farmer doesn't sell to a washing station what the beans going to weigh. Yeah. They sell okay. the entire cherry. Yes. So they get paid per pound okay. generally because most coffee is traded in dollar. Yeah. So it's, okay. it's, it's that system. So they're paid per the pound. And if their, their quality is good, the size of the bean is good, the cherry itself was yes. treated correctly, it was picked at the right time. Yeah. There's so much stuff to take into consideration. If you, take, if you pick from the farm, and you pick overripe, underripe a variety yeah. of coffee. So yeah, you've got to have the right. Uh, if you don't pick it correctly, okay. you, you're gonna you're gonna end up getting, I would say, a, 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 not a good buy on that co- no, sell yeah. on that coffee. You're gonna yeah. lose money okay. per pound. So so, so they, 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 the the pound literally the, mm-hmm. the the weight of that bean also indicates the quality. Definitely, without a doubt, in terms of density. Okay. Wow. Um, but. Remember as well, it will be also based upon that specific country. Okay. So if they know, for example, like a very, very hard grown bean, so for example, at 2,400 meters above sea level in Nicaragua, yeah. the density of the bean adds a little bit to okay. the weight of the bean. So yeah. that will be taken into account, yes. that it is a harder bean. Yeah. So that's okay. why you see on some of the bags it says SHB or yes. SHG. Okay. That's code word for strictly hard Strictly hard grown, strictly okay. hard bean. Okay. There's all these code words, and then you get sure. your different gradings. And gradings are generally related yeah. upon how many defects are in that coffee. In other words, yeah. is there insect damage? Are there are the beans whole? You know, okay. there's so much that can actually. Go how do you wrong. how do you find out what you're buying? I mean, how do you find out what's the best? You uh, don't. Rating? You buy that bag. You get home. You squeeze it like everybody else. <laughs> you go, wow, this smells amazing. <laughs> I'm talking about COVID. Neither one has a cup of coffee in their hands. I know it's true. It's, it's true. We, we have had a cup just before. Yeah, we did actually. Yeah. And we have got some brewing going to go. We're going to happen right around about now, Funk Soul Brother. Because, uh, <laughs> because I mean, obviously, the, 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 next, the next thing is, is uh, once you've got the, the roasting right, like yeah. you said, with those yeah. profiles, and, and roasting it properly, mm. then it comes to the brewing process, and and yeah. and the brewing process is just a yeah. there's so many kinds endless. of uh, endless. processes, endless. Endless. and yeah. and different grind yeah. than the, the, the grinding, you know. Yeah. Um, what what we're going to do is before we go to this though, uh, uh, yeah. Sean, is we, we're going to have a look at uh, one of the one of the oldest. In fact, I think the oldest existing roastery in, in the, the country. country in the country in South Africa, the Don. The, 
Yeah, the Don. <laughs> Not the Don of the Don. The, 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 the Don. Mr. Masterton. James Masterton, indeed. Phenomenal. An incredible chap and still and going strong. His, his dad his dad started it up. We've got a bit of history for you. Let's have a look at Masterton's. We pop, pop in into the new venue at uh, Masterton's. They've just come here a couple of years, a year or two back. Um, and we're going to go in and talk to Kaylin. She's the, the marketing lady. Um, beautiful, beautiful house in Walmart. Met up with Kaylin, who is the marketing coordinator of, yes. of Masterton's. Hi, Tina. How's it? How's it, man? You know, um, I, I've uh, I got had to have Masterton's on the show tonight, um, and so we, we that's why I came around because Masterton's is the oldest, I think, oldest roast operating roastery in, in the country. Is that right? Yes, we're actually the longest operating and serving roastery in South Africa, which is quite an achievement. It is. It is. Yes. Well, from when? when? When did it actually start? We started in 1924. So, I, I, I mean, just to, to put that into perspective as well, I mean, in 1924 is, is depression years, I'm, I'm sure. Yes. It must have been, maybe it was a, a time like COVID where, where there was no money and you've got to find something new to do. <laughs> so, so, who actually started the roastery? So, the roastery was actually started by Ronald Jock. Jock. Jock Masterton. Jock. I think we've got a photo of that as well. Yes. So, it is James Masterton's father. All right. And he started it. He came down from the Blackwash Regiment. Okay. And he finished serving in Scotland. He came to South Africa. And he decided to open a coffee roastery. Yeah. yeah. And so, this is actually the third generation of Masterton's. And we're going on 97 years. Jeez. But it's been a wonderful journey. And it's yeah. so nice to, to know that it's been a family business throughout. Amazing. That the that the Masterton family's been doing yeah. this this particular roaster is the uh, original the original roaster they've, they've had it refurbished re refurbished to the new the new venue and um, I mean just it's beautiful it's it's, it's it's obviously a barrel roaster with the with a gas coming up up here to heat the heat the barrel and then it, it, it I mean it's it's so um, elementary but it's just beautiful you know and you obviously do lots of lots of roast, roastery now um, the Masterton's has, has, because it's been around for so long, it's got a big brand. So, I mean, how far do you guys actually reach out? Do you, do you uh, export as well? So, we do actually have a reseller in Dubai. Dubai, so we that's are right. actually okay. spreading our wings. <laughs> and it's quite nice because for the first time, we're starting to enter into your pick and play family stores and making our way into the counting area. Because you're in the spas, I know yes, that. You're yes, yes. Th th throughout the spa, guys. Yes. And then, and I, I love that it's a PE brand, you know, uh, coming from Kibera. <laughs> now, you know, and but but it's it's really built here in BP and and and, and it's it's spreading throughout, you know. Exactly. So so Joburg. Yes, you know, we're hopefully making our way in there in the next couple of months or okay. weeks even. So oh, really? we'll see. And so, really excited to have a national reach. National reach because um, obviously it's expanded as well. I believe you've got a factory down in, in, in North End somewhere as well. And yes. so there's different venues happening and and, and a lot more um, a lot more production happening because you've got to have that that production going up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The new venue that was from how, how long has it been here now? So we moved to Warmer in 2018, so we're going on three years. Now. Because it was in Russell Road before this. Yes. Everybody knows Russell Road. We're halfway up Russell Road where that smell we used know to. The smell. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows the smell. And then before then, it, uh, when it started, uh, or Jock yes. started it in Queen Street. Yes, in Queen Street in Governor Berkey back yes. in the day. Yes. So yes. that was the main road. In yeah, right. Town. Yeah, it was called Queen Street. Obviously, that changed about three or four times until now, Governor Becky, and then of course to Russell Road, and, and now finally to Warmer. Yes. And I, th I think it's a good it's a good fit for Warmer because it's a, it's a historic um, area as well. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's so nice. We one of the things we're actually working on at the moment. We're so happy to be here because we have a garden now. Lovely. And now we have our first coffee tree. Ah, you got to make it grow. Yes. So. <laughs> Everything. Lovely, <laughs> lovely. And, and I just love the look at you. I see you've got a restaurant, a little restaurant well, here. A little coffee bar. So coffee it's bar. nice. You come and get your, your beans or your grounds and yeah. you have them made prepared freshly for you. And while you wait, you can enjoy a lovely coffee at the bar. Indeed. So it's quite an experience and to come here. 
It's a beautiful San Remo machine. Woo, it's lovely. Anybody want to buy one? They're about 170,000, 180,000 rand. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Kaylin. It's, uh, it's lovely and, I, and I, I love the history of Marston. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that went, yeah. actually went better than I thought. It's easy peasy, yeah. man. It's yeah. Easy, easy. <laughs> it did go better than you thought, Kaylee. She's she's lovely. <laughs> the new marketing lady there at, at Masterton's and uh, James wasn't there, but James, somebody tag him. James, we love you, man. It's always up for a joke when I when I pop in there, and he's got a damn good Russian accent. If you need one, it's good, you yeah. can't speak Russian very good. Very <laughs> Russian, I'm Russian nowhere. Yeah, he's rushing everywhere, uh, James. Why don't but, we get the nice smell when we go past warmer? Well, I don't know, you know, I'm sure mm -hmm. they've got that machine does does hook it every now and again. I smell it. I think all the uh, all the, mm -hmm. the, the people around there in uh, mm -hmm. 7th, 8th Avenue are going to be wanting, yeah. wanting a bit of that smell. I Sometimes think. in life we need to slow down and smell yes. the coffee. Yes, we do. We <laughs> smell. You know, Mosh. Nee. Yeah, nee. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sean, let's, uh, let's, let's have a quick look at the at the brewing. Well, you Tell me about the brewing here. Yeah. We've well, got a whole lot of stuff here. Okay, we? so, you know, the thing is, is that I brought three different brew methods. Yes. Number one, the plunger. The plunger. Everybody's got one plunger. of these. Yes. People have got stuff lying in the back of the cupboard that is a plunger and think it's something from the Russian Revolution <laughs> because they don't know what it is. Yes. Generally, most people that pull it out of that cupboard are people that it's probably broken. They haven't yeah. got a clue what it is. They don't know how to use it. Yeah. Um, the number one brew method currently yes. in the world. Yes. The Aeropress. Aeropress. It's been, it's been, it's been a very, very uh, popular method of brew. It basically gives you the best of both worlds. The pour over as well yeah. as the extraction. So I'm not going to demonstrate yeah. this one. I think the portability as well. It's yeah. kind of quite, it's quite, it's yeah, quite nice and portable it's, if you want to. It's, if you want to. it's great. It's absolutely great. You put your coffee in here. You yeah. put your little filter paper there. You fill it up. You give it a stir. There's so Do many different methods. Yeah. You, you clip that on. And you put it around on, on the cup through. and you and, yeah. and it pushes straight into so your So it gives you that combination cup. of like the the effects you get of like a filter coffee in terms uh -huh. of flavor because of the grind size. Okay. That impacts the extraction. A but thicker grind size or thinner uh, or slightly or thicker than espresso. So thicker, I would okay. say coarser. Yeah. What I do is I normally say you've got along the lines of espresso, which is very much like a fine sea sand. Okay. Then you get something along the lines of uh, like a white sugar, yeah. and then you go to a brown or a treacle type sugar. Wow, that would okay. be your coarser type ground coarser size. Grounds. You would use something along the lines of a, like a white sugar. Okay. In terms so, of this, so in terms of ground size. A so lighter, but, but still a slightly little bit, coarser. A little bit finer than filter ground coffee. Okay, so yeah. if you if you feel filter ground coffee in the, in the yeah. shop, it's quite chunky. Yes. You know, okay. so that and that's the thing. That's what I've ground. I pre ground um, some coffee Lovely. over here. So I've actually pre ground some Brazil. So okay. I'm taking you to Brazil, Copacabana, huh? Copa, Copa Cabana. That's right. Oh, lovely, man. We're going to get to taste, taste some here. Yeah? I hope the guys are watching. So backstage, what I've done is I've pre-boiled some okay. water yes, in my water, kettle. Yes. Uh, water, guys, very, very, very important. Yes, if you got this one, it's very nice. Yeah. Very, very good. And if you're thirsty, it'll <laughs> quench your thirst. Thirsty um, water. <laughs> The reason I obviously go with a good brand of water and especially using, if you've got, if you've got a filter at home, it's great. Yeah, okay. Use your filter at home. Osmosis stories? Preferably not because reverse okay. osmosis takes everything out of the water. You okay. don't want dead water. Okay, you want so you want water. like a little bit of something. You want Just a little filtered. bit of something. The big filtered. thing for me is a combination of, have a look on the bottle generally, what is the TDS, the total dissolved solids. So yeah. That's the combination of inorganic which is like your elements and minerals, magnesium, yes. sodium, calcium. Okay. And organic particles, which is like your muck, your sludge, that type oh, of stuff. Oh, nice. Okay, so very nice. if you indeed. look at this, for example, it's got 217. That is actually, when it comes to okay. water quality from the World Coffee events, yeah. they recommend anything between about 180 and 250 of wow. total dissolved solids, which means your water has substance. Yeah because that brings out a lot that's within the coffee. It highlights the acids, it okay. highlights the sugars, it's all okay, that. Okay. But then your other three important things I've mentioned already, magnesium, calcium, and sodium. Yes. And then a big factor is um, obviously chlorine. Ah, chlorine. Chlorine, okay. when you're taking water out of your tap, is yes. gonna impact the quality of your coffee incredibly. Okay. You're gonna have a major problem. Okay. And then another thing is uh, pH. Okay, oh, the, the acidity. Yes. Acidity. So, and, if you've got a very acidic, remember, coffee is naturally acidic. 
Okay, okay. If water is very acidic, you're going to have that clash of okay. the, the two acids and you're going to impact the flavor, the profile, the, the complexity right. of your coffee. So try go with a water that's a lot more alkaline. Okay. It okay. really is. So, you know, you've got a lot of brands out there of water. The reason is, for me, I'm looking for consistency in terms yeah. of brewing. So I pre-boil my kettle. We're at home, you know, you're not going to have the fancy scale. You're not going to have yeah. all that stuff. So what I've done is I'm going old school here. Yeah, okay, okay. I ignore the gooseneck. All right, so no, okay. no, the gooseneck's it very fancy. It, yes, it doesn't nice. matter. It doesn't matter, the gooseneck. Okay. What, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it over here. This yeah. is a 350 mil plunger. Okay. So for those guys at home, if you bar, if you just bar a simple filter ground coffee, yeah. it doesn't need to be anything special. If you okay. go to your local roastery, if you speak to your local roasters that are so buying just coffee, bar, yeah, yeah, you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bar filter ground coffee or yeah. ask for a plunger ground coffee. So yeah. the difference between filter and plunger. So feel that, you know? Yeah. Feel how rough that is. Yes. This is now yeah. like kind of beyond, like beyond like, just thicker than sugar. I'd yes. Say. It's it's probably between your like your yeah. your treacle, your yeah. thicker, thicker sugar. Thicker sugar yeah. And the nice thing with a 350 mil plunger yeah. is just take one heaped tablespoon. One heaped tablespoon. And that's it. 350 mils. Okay, so that 350 mils, one heap tablespoon, because you never know. Okay. Okay. Pile it in, you know, or, or, they, or they put a little, like a cheese. So teaspoon. the beauty about this fancy scale, I was telling you yeah. yesterday, is I have the ability to, to time. Okay. But more importantly, the nice thing with this particular scale yes. is this scale can actually pair to my phone via Bluetooth. <laughs> actually tell me when to not pour, when to pour. I can put in a recipe to get What's the that? ultimate... Uh, brew in terms of extraction and <laughs> okay. um, with the with the plunger as well just give it a nice little stir so you yeah. make sure that you wet all that coffee yes. and then all you want to do you'll notice it's 26 seconds you okay. want to just pop this on oh, so it and, times you, it. and then you basically at two and a half to three minutes you plunge it down and serve it wow okay okay so three. a lot of people have you know the plunger is very underrated for me yeah I love the flavor of plunger, but what a lot of people don't enjoy yeah. is that sediment, that oh, taste okay. in your mouth. Yes, yes. Now, this is where the Clever Dripper comes in. Clever Dripper? It's clever. It's very, I'm sure, it's so, very, hello. <laughs> What's your name? Doesn't talk back to me at all. <laughs> so, I'm watching the time over there, and I'm going to, I'm going to just, so I'm going to just start this yeah, right yeah, now. Just, it, to, just, to, just to do it through. You okay, know, well, let's okay, just get let's this all it. done. Do it, do it, do it. Because we're using a filter paper, the yeah. one thing a lot of people don't take into consideration is they so don't... going to come out the bottom, is it sealed? No. Sealed there. So, <laughs> so, Gino, this is where the surprise comes in. Is oh, that right. It's called the Clever Dripper because it's got a valve that releases the water. Ah, oh, look at that. So once you've actually... Very clever. <laughs> very. very clever. So I've just pre-rinsed that. Okay. And then what I've done here is I've actually pre-ground oh, a whole yeah. lot of oh, Rwandan coffee. coffee. Ah. So my favorite coffee is Rwanda. Okay. Um, Ethiopian Rwanda, absolutely fantastic. African coffees. Love I it, like love that. it, love it, love it. And now with so you wet this, you wet this thing first. You, eh? you pre-wet it, and the reason you want to pre-wet it is you want to get rid of any of that sediment or, or okay. obviously um, right. mess that's in the paper. You want to yeah. basically, and then with a clever dripper, three tablespoons. Three tablespoons. A little bit the clever more. dripper takes five hundred mils. Oh, right, okay. And with it being also a full immersion brew, yeah. it gives you a much, much, much nicer finish. Full immersion. On the brew. And the reason I say that is you'll see, yeah, so I've Tell started. Me what's there. Full, uh, full, immer you mean full immersion it's, it's means the coffee is completely, completely covered. covered. Okay, okay. But with a lot of the full immersion, so you'll see now I'm going to fill this up. Yeah. We're on just on two and a half minutes. Sure, okay. Well, so one, I'm going to start plunging that. So you see, okay. this is called um, coffee juggling. Yes, I see that. Now, I started pouring that at 2 minutes 15. Yeah. So with the, with the Clever Dripper, okay. that you want it to soak or steep for yeah. about 4 minutes. Okay. And then oh, this one, this one. you put it onto the vessel and let it extract through. Okay. So it's the same as this being full immersion, Yeah. but it's full immersion filtered. And filtered all that mm. all that sediment is taken out as well. Okay, oh, so wow. if you like the plunger mm. but you don't want the mm. sediment, then you yeah. use the little clever use dripper. Little clever dripper. But Just. everybody, I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoy plunger coffee. Yes. So this is yes, one hundred percent Brazil Cerrado. Wow. Okay. So single origin. Single origin Brazil. Uh, yeah. Single origin meaning it's come from one place, one farm. 
Well, not necessarily yes, because, because the you get single origin, you get single estate. Okay. So if it's come from wow. one farm, gone through one washing station, then yes. you will get, for example, like Uganda, Mount Algon, CP Falls. Okay. And you know it comes from that region right. and from a specific washing station, yes. which is based, for example, CP Falls. So with this one, this comes specifically from the Cerrado region, okay. but it's not a single estate. All it's 100% right. Brazil Cerrado region. Wow, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So that's yeah. a region. Mm. Very nice. So if you smell it, the one thing that's very popular about Brazil, it's very nutty. Very nutty. Very, <laughs> very like, like you. Austin yeah. Powers. Yeah. When I came on after your little sing and dance, I didn't know how I was going to um, <laughs> take over from you. <laughs> oh, but give nice. that a little taste. Okay, now how do we taste it properly? What's, what's the proper way of you want to do like solid evaluation? Solid a evaluation. Proper. Okay, proper. Huh? I remember proper. you were telling me about this evaluation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour myself a little bit here. Okay. And the thing is as well, what I'm doing is I'm also watching the clock. Yes. Because at, at 5 minutes 15, yes. I'm going to give this a stir, leave it for a minute, and I'm going to pop it onto the vessel for that to extract through. Oh, yeah, I know. So we, we're seriously oh, juggling right. it. Yeah, so this is called a cupping spoon. A cupping spoon. Look at that. That's got a little bit of, you can see the camera there. So, so it gives you the ability spoon. to basically get a nice big portion of coffee and act, act so looks, evaluate This looks like the one that you can bend. Watch, watch, yeah. Watch, I can bend it. Wow. Bend it with my mind. Wow. See? Don't bend my cupping spoon. Okay, I'll bend. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Caution, it's right. hot. Okay, it's That's hot. my official waiver. All right, all right. All right, so what you want to do is you're going to slurp it. Like slurp it. Off a spoon. Like, like so hectically or? Hectic, like viciously. Vicious, a okay. vicious slurp, people. <laughs> my God, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is hectic. I think I could have done it no, 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 more you than you. You could have done, you, wow, that, wasn't, that wasn't very vicious. That wasn't vicious So enough. you see, I've got a cast iron pellet, so for me, it is a little bit hot still. <laughs> Do it again. Jeez. <laughs> now, what's interesting about introducing a lot of air, you pick up... Thanks, Wendy. I'm watching you. <laughs> Just drink it. No, no, I no. can't do it like you did. You need to but be more vicious. But you see, that comes with time and practice. Okay, okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do now <laughs> is I'm going to take my little stirrer. I'm going to give this... Right. So. I want you to have a smell there. What we're basically yes. doing here is we're breaking the crust. Now this is the Rwanda. Look at that crema on the top. I know. Smell that. Oh, I mean, that is just so beautiful. It's, that a, it's a very fruity coffee. The, the crema is uh, are the, mm. are the oils mm. that yeah. come off the, yeah. off the beans. So the combination of basically temperature yeah. and extraction time and heat give okay. you that crema. But the thing is, wow. is that it's trapped within yes. this vessel in this vessel. Of With course. an espresso machine, yes. it comes through because it's coming through the actual basket. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, the, the, the crema is essential for, for yeah. latte art. Look, well. crema plays a massive role in latte art, but more importantly, it, it, it's, it's the actual the gases of the espresso where a lot of the aroma lies. Okay. So if you don't have a crema and you pour, number one, it affects your latte art, and number yeah. two, it actually affects your flavor. Because remember, flavor, the flavor that you get is a combination of taste and aroma. Yeah. You know when you grow up, if you're eating vegetables, yes, of course. knock your nose. It's like COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are just over a minute there. All right. And watch this. I'll pop this over yeah. and... And through it goes. It just and it it goes quite through. quickly, eh? Look, this takes normally about a minute of extraction. Yeah, yeah. With specialty coffee or enjoying coffee on this level, oh, it's, beautiful. There's, there's, it's not a case of yeah. this is convenience. Yeah. This is time. It yeah, takes yeah, a little bit, a bit of, time. of time. It takes a bit of patience. You want good coffee, you give yeah. it a bit of time. That's right. Exactly. You'll notice with this one as well, is now you, there's all your crema on the surface. Yes, yes. But what's happening is we're filtering out all that residue that we, okay. we're getting with the coffee. But give yeah, it, give, yeah, just yeah, pick yeah, the coffee up, give it a sip. So as I was saying, the one thing with Brazil specifically, nutty, yes. earthy, chocolatey. Yes, I'm getting a bit of nut. I'm yeah. tasting the nuts. I'm, I'm surrounded by nuts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're not going to go to the other nuts. <laughs> no, not those nuts. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Okay, now that is very, very nice coffee. So what's going to say? Look at this. So the beauty about this is look you know at your that? grounds there. Yes. Beautifully extracted. Yeah. And the nice thing now is... And it stops messing because it's... take this and you just... Oh, look at that. 
And it's gone and it's clean. And it's mess free. Yeah. And there you've got what basically 500 moles of beautiful coffee to, to hand around for your guests. Yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a nice way. So of, what I'm going to do, yeah, yeah, is you know we we we're gonna we're gonna actually mm. give you a little bit of that to taste, so you mm. can see the difference. So okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna COVID uh, friendly this one. Okay, that's fine. All right. Fine. I'm gonna pop that. that back over there. No, no, that's okay. fine. We'll leave it over there. Okay. And then I'm gonna give you some of this. Uh, yes, this is the this, Rwanda. this one Rwandan. So they'll, they'll taste the difference between the Rwandan and the Brazilian. So Brazilian more savory, more sweet notes of chocolate um, yes. and very nutty okay. whereas Rwandan fruits, spices, um, definitely more acidic straight away oh, wow. off the bat. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's, well it's easy to remember I suppose if it's Brazilian, how, how, do you, um, how do you remember the two together, Brazilian and nuts? I don't know how I will do that. <laughs> That's an awkward moment. Okay. Uh, all right. When, uh, you, I suppose when you drink coffee, you don't stick your pinky up well. I certainly well, be well. Okay. So I'm going to move really? into a place where I have no culture, and I'm going to drink straight out of this. Oh no, out of the jug. Good. good. Actually, well, I'll, I'll actually drink out of the cup and spoon. That is, uh, I actually do prefer the Rwandan for now. You notice it's just um, the thing yeah. is for everybody. We all have a very different palate, and yeah. we all enjoy specific aspects of certain coffees. Yeah. Now. A blend would be taking a combination of single origins yeah. and mixing them together using obviously some sort of formula, yeah. one part of this, one part of this, two parts of that, okay. to get, to get a, better, a better balance. But you notice this coffee is very light, it's not like yeah. espresso. Yeah. It's taking a, it's a slightly, it's a longer extraction time, there's a soaking process, very much like a, a filter coffee. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I mean, I know with this, obviously the espresso through the through the espresso machine, yeah. it pushes through that. There's a, there's a specific um, uh, science to it as well. It's uh, what is it? Nine bars. Nine bars of nine pressure. Bars of pressure yeah. Pushes for twenty odd seconds, twenty one seconds, twenty two mm. seconds, mm. Um, through a, an amount of. A gram nine, between nine and eighteen grams. Nine single and a, or double. single or double. Yeah. Nine grams yeah. of coffee at twenty-two seconds, mm. and that uh, if you get thirty mils out of that, mm. that is a perfect, perfect, a perfect espresso. So, nice shot. thing to remember with espresso grind size, or let's say grind size versus extraction, is the yeah. finer the grind, the shorter the extraction time. Okay. The coarser the grind. The longer the extraction time. Wow. Okay. So with fruit, if you think of those old campfire percolators, where yes. it sits on like a mocha pot kind of now thing. Now think of when you put it. If you put fine ground in there, what happens? You just end yeah. up with a cup of sludge. Yes. You yes. have to literally grind coffee three times coarser than wow. that. Wow. So, so that thick. it doesn't get it, it. It sits within that. And it goes sudden. around and around and around, doesn't it? It basically filters through itself. Yes. Th there's those itself. old. Yeah. Uh, what are those? The, it's those camping. The camping yes. percolators. I remember we, we had one with. It was there was oh. one with a with a white uh, a, a, a sort of a cream colored yes. with the with the blue. Flowers. I can't remember what yeah, they used to call those the pots. The old, um, like the, the old um, wood coffee pots. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, there's see, a blue flower. Come on, somebody remember what were those those pots? There was a whole range of pots with a, yeah. with a white and then the blue flower mm. on it that was very popular. Yeah. And I can't remember that corn, mm. not corning way or no, it was, something, it something like that. Like that. I see uh, Carl made a comment. He can smell the coffee from over here. Ah, uh, uh, Carl. Uh, Brian Carl, says he still uses milk and four sugars. So Carl Squishy Grieber. Oh, right, is, yes. is the doctor that I was telling you about from Livingston, who okay. is the bean stalking coffee. Oh, right. So okay. the Rwanda is compliments of Carl. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And, and, and Livingston, we've had yeah. the guys from Livingston on. Well done, Carl. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, I Carl. See, um, I see Pam, Pam is asking, please explain the process of decaf coffee. You need an exorcism, <laughs> woman. <laughs> I'm joking. We'll Pam. Pray for her. Pam. 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 No. Stop. Stop. What? In the name of love. In the name of love. <laughs> okay. So decaf, yes. the interesting thing is, unfortunately, there are different methods of decaffeinating coffee. Okay. The most popular method around the world that is basically sold in specifically South Africa is where they use the CO2, the carbon dioxide process, okay. where they pass in the actual green coffee through um, what they call it subcritical um, okay. or um, CO2 process where they're passing it through a combination of gases and liquid yes. to extract the caffeine 
out of the coffee. Uh, okay. So the it's, thing a, is, it's quite a process. There, yeah, look, there's a lot of damage that is done to the bean. And yeah. you lose a lot of com complexity in the coffee. You lose a lot of flavor. Yeah. It's impacting the different balances of the coffee. So it's impacting your acidity. It's impacting yeah. your sugars in the coffee, which brings out the natural sweetness. Yes. Um, the most uh, popular but yet most expensive method of, of decaffeinating coffee is what they call the Swiss water method. All right. The Swiss water method is where they actually wash coffees through a big bath of water okay. and introduce a current to the water which actually impacts and extracts the actual caffeine okay, out of the water. Okay. Sure. So it's, it's like a washing process, if you want to okay, call that, right. actually extracts the caffeine out of the bean. Okay. And then the problem with that is you have to now discard all that water. All uh, right, I see. So it's not very, yeah. it's not very uh, nice for yeah. the environment. So Corningware, yeah, she says Corningware. Corningware. It was called yeah. Corningware. That's, yeah. that's, that is it. Yeah. That is so, it. So, you know, for example, we last year we brought in a, a batch of Mexico L2 can decaf coffee. Um, okay. Locally, uh, there was a couple of guys selling it. Um, okay. Actually, Chris Farriger from Holiday yeah. Coffee had it on his bar. Okay. It's a phenomenal coffee, it was Swiss uh, water method, right. and it has still those complexities and yeah. flavors because it's not getting damaged by the CO2 or even the chemical process, which is yeah. the other process where they actually use chemicals to extract. So a lot of, of, of customers don't realize that when you're decaffeinating coffee, you're actually impacting that complexity, that flavor, yes. those attributes on the coffee that you don't want to okay, lose. Okay, yeah, it, yeah, is, a, it yeah. is a bit of a problem. Decaf is a little bit of a problem, otherwise you have to go to the, the Swiss thing. Mm. <laughs> Swiss the reality thing. out there is there's people that have an actual genuine um, resistance to caffeine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. No, no, I, th I, I think, think yeah, you want to be able do. to provide that for everybody. You have to have some. So, you know, although, you know, it's not the best, but it'll do. It'll do. It'll do, do Pam. It'll nah. do. Now, um, there's, I did a little video, actually, of my, my roaster. Um, I mm. don't know, you can you can give me a couple of tips on on, on my roasting there. Um, Must I be honest? Yes, you have to be honest. Like, yes, really honest? Yes, no, totally. Yeah. Okay. I might hit you doing this, bro. <laughs> let's have a look. Let's have a look at my roasting. Ah, knowledge is Ah, All right, we started in my lounge there. That's where Gino Spot actually started. Uh, and this is the, is the roaster that I, that I got from, uh, from Sumatran, actually, from Deirdre, which is a great 300 grams. See, it fits in a little 300 grams. It's got a blowtorch in here. <laughs> There's your blowtorch. And uh, it's, it, it's got a thermostat, so it tells, and it's also a little timer in there. So it tells you when, the, when, when it starts to get the first crack, which is the first, like, pops like popcorn. First time it pops, it's a medium roast. So um, we're going to try and do a little bit of a roast so you can see how it happens. The dog goes ballistic, by the way, I don't know why. All right, so first thing to do, I've got a little special little system that I've got here, you see, special, my special little system. Green beans, green beans over here. This is a Guatemalan, from, all the way from Guatemala, these ones. I just uh, guess 300 grams, and uh, put it in the, in the barrel. I have to get the right amount of beans, right size of beans, so that they don't fall through these little holes. Um, and then on it goes. Now we wait. Yeah, you see the chaff starting to come off now. That's the old skins that's gonna. That's why you can't do this inside unless you've got some sort of suction machine. Now this is the first crack. You can hear the you can hear the popping. When you when that happens, you know it's a medium roast. So we're gonna just let it go a little longer. You can smell the coffee coming off, you can smell that coffee smell coming off here as well. Whew, quite a lot of gas and stuff that comes off. It can be poisonous if you're in this confined space. Okay, so now that it's cooled down nicely, the beans are cooled down nicely. So we put it into the grinder, this is the hopper. Call that the hopper. And we put it in there. There we go. Lovely, we've got, we've got a whole lot of beans in there as well. So in it goes and then it can be ground. 
So we're going to set the grinder. The grinder gets set over here. You turn it left, uh, you know, left or right, clockwise, anti-clockwise, gives you the, the grind. And, uh, there we go. It looks lovely. We even it out a bit. And uh, tamp it with the tamping tool. Indeed. So it compresses it nicely. Give it a little, give the machine a little flush. This is a, a little Vega. Had it nicely fixed up, Jay. Thank you for fixing up the machine so beautifully. That's some nice steam pressure for the milk. And uh, off we go. In it goes. Bit of milk. Spa milk. It's got a um, the cardboard. It's, it falls apart after you throw it. You know. Just in case you, uh, um, it's biodegradable. There we go. You can see it coming out the crema. Coming. If you go close in, close up here. You see how it's coming out there. It's going quite fast. That's right. Probably a little bit more than 30 moles, but it's still getting the crema. You see that, that beautiful crema on top. That's what you want. The oils. That's the oils. All right. Uh, let's see. There. All right. And so, give it a look. spin it around, spin it around. It takes quick because the milk is already quite warm, it gets warm very quickly, it gets hot quickly. Into the pouring jug. You need to have a nice fair jug for your stuff. This one looks a little bit better. There we go. Okay, we got it here. Can you make it? Can you see it? Just get a little base going. And there we go. <laughs> Not too bad, you know. Eh? Not too bad. I'm a proud father. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was there she to the birth. There we go. You can always come to the store and play barista there. I think I will, Teresa. Whereabouts are you? Let, let me know where you... Teresa are. is in East London. East London. Mm. Oh, so I don't man. think she can afford you. No, no, I'm there. I'm oh, there every wow. now and again. I come, I come and sort if you if you give me a chance behind the machine, I'm there like a bear. I know another friend of mine from East London, of course, Corin, from Lavender Blue as well. What, yes. is, what is Teresa's place called? Uh, Teresa is from Wimpy Nahoon. Oh, Wimpy Nahoon, excellent. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll have to yeah, pop down yeah, there, Teresa. Yeah. And, and I, I know it, at Lavender Blue as well, I just love it. I mean, Corin is a, is, is a, is a coffee maniac. And, Beautiful. Uh, and yeah. I, uh, so I, I, really, I really love going there. Mm. She's, got, she's based her whole thing around the coffee. Mm. And, uh, and what an incredible, yeah. uh, um, incredible thing there. Lavender Blue is like part of the, yeah. part of the woodwork. But I'm definitely going to come to Teresa, I'm going to yeah. come and have a look. Yeah, Teresa's amazing. I mean, Lavender Blue, corin has been around a long time. Yeah. She's really injected a lot of herself and her passion for coffee into the culture yeah. in East London. And sure. she's definitely one of the, the mothers yes. in, in the coffee industry. So all in all, your video was pretty amazing. Was it pretty good? The, when you said amazing, you do you mean was like a, amazing, was, amazing, or? amazing, amazing? Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Good. The best part of that video for me was your dog playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> My dog goes bal ballistic every time I roast coffee. I, I don't know. Oh, no. The chef comes off and it wants to jump to To be me. honest, you, you did it spot on. Spot on. It looked fantastic. It looked I like could, a good, it was I a good could, shot. I could smell. You could smell that. It vicariously through yeah, you. Get it. Uh, the, the, the latte art obviously is, is another mm. story. And uh, you are this, the latte art specialist. I uh, know there, there's some guys um, that, that, so, have, that so. I've seen. Um, I know Byron from Cape Town. He's in Cape Town now. Byron yeah. won the latte art competition, yeah. and um, I mean, you know the, the latte art thing is a, is quite a quite a, a, a competition in the in the yeah. in the Scarza Scarza compost. That's great. And uh, uh, so so I want to. I think we must have a look at some of your latte art. You you, you actually showed. He came in and he showed me how to how to do a little elephant. And a, and a teddy bear, which I thought was fantastic. I oh, loved it. Just some fun before we let's start. Have, let's have a look. Let's have a look. There we go. Ready to rock and roll the teddy bear. <laughs> uh -huh. Start with a heart. Kind of a tulip. All right. I'll put a little bit.
bit of spooning spooning out there. Lovely. Oh, and the crap. etching thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the paws. Oh, that's a beaut. <laughs> oh, that's just lovely. Lovely. It's a teddy bear. Alright. What is it? It. We're in. That looks lovely. Uh -huh. Oh, look at you! <laughs> That's beautiful. Woo! Some net so I've never professionals. Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah, I'll take okay, the stylist. Yeah. yeah. And all right. So I'm going to give it a nice thicker coat for the ear. <laughs> then I bring this around here, give us two beautiful little tusks. Tusks. And then oh, I take I some brown for the R. Yeah, a little bit cute. more. A little bit more. And then my last two little bumps. And there we and, go. And if I want to give my elephant a little bit more character, I can take a bit from there. Oh, that's just beautiful. And why not just give him some hair? <laughs> that is beautiful, Sean. It's the African elephant. That was a lovely. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. That was awesome. But, but, but you, I mean, you can just see your, your, you've, you've done this to perfection. That, that, yeah. that, that making those, those um, what, are they, what do they call them? Uh, rosettas. Rosetta, uh, yeah. Rosettas yeah. Are, are, are difficult. And, and, and it, I find it, it's a, and when you walk into a coffee shop, and, and somebody does some good latte art, they are generally a good barista. You know? You know, the thing is, it takes a lot of time and attention to detail and, and, and honing in on this craft yeah. to get to the point where your crema is so perfect to the point that it gives you that perfect base yes. you spoke about. Yeah. And the milk texturing is so important. The way yeah. you texture the milk, you need the perfect amount of vortex, the perfect amount of aeration. Yeah. You see that milk turning. It gets to a certain point where if you don't cut it and you stop heating the milk, you're going to break down the yes. milk way too much. As soon as that, the, 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 I always think that as soon as that milk boils, it's yeah. gone. You've destroyed it's it. You've so destroyed it. Kill all that natural sweetness. Now the yeah. protein content within the milk gives you actually yeah. the foam structure. Oh, wow. Okay. So when you overheat the milk, you break down the protein too much. So when the guys go too far over in the terms of the yes. temperature and they pour their latte art and they wonder why their latte art's not good. Yeah. It's because they've broken down the protein too much. Mm -hmm. So it's so important. And I mean, you using this, I use the spa milk, the Woodlands yeah. Dairy milk. Yeah, Woodlands um, milk is... Uh, at Red Band Academy, they yeah. sponsor us. Okay. Their milk, it's amazing. That, that, milk. That, that milk has been, uh, the, the baristas actually, actually yeah. come out saying that the milk is, is tops and it's really nice. And once again, it's all about, not necessarily about the brand itself, but it's about the consistency of the product that's going to give yeah. you the ultimate drink that you're serving yes. to a client that they must get their monies with. Yeah. And, you know, so latte art is just a way that you can express yourself. I've watched your latte art over the years <laughs> and your little characters. Joy, I love it, I love it. But that's the thing. Coffee connects people. Coffee brings yeah. joy. Coffee creates excitement. Yes. Coffee really is so much more than just a beverage. It's yeah. a way of life. It's, it's, it's so much more. And that's why every step of the process, if you look right from the farm, right yeah. to the client being served, yeah. if every step was done with passion well, yeah. and intricacy. Exactly. And you can actually taste it in that cup of coffee yeah. when somebody has put so much time and energy and effort and themselves yeah. into that cup. Yeah. And, and that's for sure. Nice. They can, like mm -hmm. you say, they can destroy that coffee with, in, in that at the last minute, you know. So, mm -hmm. so it's so important to actually mm -hmm. just check. I, I always, I've got a couple of questions that I go and say hi to, hi to the barista. You know, uh, I think um, the, the, there's like a, um, the other thing about, about baristas and coffee is the, the, there's a, there's a huge, always been a huge drive in upliftment. Now, uh, if, if it's, if it's um, uh, baristas that have started out off the streets, you yeah. know, I mean, you've got a, you've got a coffee uh, a barista academy, have you not? Yeah, no. Red Band Barista Academy. Uh, we started in 2014. Yeah. We're taking guys basically off the streets 
we are teaching them a skill, finding them a job. Um, the most important thing is we go through a job readiness program, CSA Benza work for a living, they go through that program, they can then come, they qualify then for an interview, yeah. we interview the ladies, the guys, we, we, take, we take them through a screening process because yeah. you know being a barista is about having a vibe, yeah. right? it's about having the right attitude. Yeah. You cannot have a barista behind the counter that's standing there quietly. Yeah. Um, and is it a bad thing? No. Can they yeah. form part of a, a bigger team with they, yes. with they've got a more maybe a, a quiet demeanor about yeah, them? Yeah. They can. Yeah. The thing is, is that you've got to think of the team holistically. Then. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, we take them through this program. We okay. teach them. We've placed baristas around the country. Yeah. We've 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 put over I would say 250 to 300 baristas around the country and in Africa. Yeah into jobs and yeah we've got That's a amazing. center in george we've got a center in cape town our center in cape town we actually did recently it's through gangstar which is a prison rehabilitation wow. program and that's been just amazing it's just been yeah. such a great journey to see how coffee changes lives coffee yeah. empowers people i've seen it so many yeah. times you know I, 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 the, the, the one of the first things that i did when i when i got into coffee angeline mm. was organizing the scars competition at the home expo with bev i mm. think at, mm. at, it was at the boardwalk and they had the home expo on and i was emceeing and i see gerald watching from scotland I never could talk, thought you could talk too much about coffee. I tell you what, <laughs> Gerald, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, much more munch. <laughs> Indeed. And you know, I've seen basically the, the, these guys um, coming to the competitions and, and I emceed that competition yeah. there. Yeah. And there was a, there was a guy there uh, who won the latte art that year who was Mike Chiesa. Yes. And he had literally just arrived uh, he's, he, and he's got a story and of course that is uh, my coffee or my coffee. Yeah. I'm not sure how he pronounces it. Yeah. But we went to visit him in Main Road Warming. He's got a little empire that he's building in this place. Let's have a look at Mike. All right, we're going to have a quick visit at one of the entrepreneur, coffee entrepreneurs in town, Mike Chiesa. He's got my coffee in Main Road Warmer. Let's have a look at what he's done. Mike Chiesa. For Mike Coffee, um, I mean, what an amazing journey, Mike. Uh, I met you, I remember I met you doing, I was MC, I was MC for a Skaza uh, competition, a coffee competition, where they were doing latte art, and they were doing also, and you won the latte art that time. That's right, yeah. Oh, that time, you know, we, we were so young, and yeah. we enjoyed every part of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Came from Zimbabwe about the early 2000s? Uh, in 2000, uh, Got into coffee. That's right. Well, uh, did you start with with the, Did you start on your own, or did you work for somebody? I uh, I started working for Woolworths. Woolworths. Uh, I think I worked for them for nine years. Okay. And then I decided, okay, let me branch out and start my own thing. And okay. Since then, it's been an amazing awesome. journey. And uh, so yeah, I mean, the, you for me epitomize entrepreneurship. Like, I mean, you started from nothing. You know, did you start with a cart or did you start with a machine? How did you start? No, apparently, like what happened uh, when I was waiting for Woolworth, I bought Toyota Corolla car. That yeah, I decided to sell and buy a machine. Okay, you sold the car. Yeah, <laughs> and a grinder. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> and job. then that's how we started. And then we just put the machine on it on a on a trolley. A trolley. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, we were just pulling the machine in and out of the natural your store. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did, did you have a spot that you that you frequented? Did was there? Did you go to festivals or? Uh, by that time we were not doing any events. I was just waiting from one spot where we are, but okay. Okay. at the back of the complex. Okay. Yeah. But from then we moved to uh, do events. Uh, so yeah, I did it. I I bought a little car, like lifting the machine. No, that was a light car. It was a light. <laughs> so lifting the machine into the Cosa light bag, out, put it in a, in a trolley, gazebo, <laughs> set up, you know, one man show, it was tough, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Sure. But uh, with that event, we sort of like built our clientele much bigger. Okay. Yeah, okay. so we used the event to sort of like mobilize or advertise our brand. Yes, and was it always my coffee? It's been always my coffee. My coffee. So you, you decided on a brand and yes. you stuck to it? Yeah. 
It always makes what brilliant. It's yeah. brilliant, and, and, and look how, it, how it's grown. I mean, you've got this, this store here yeah. in, uh, in Main Road Warmer. You've yeah. become part of the Warmer fabric here. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The guys come past here. They always tell me they go past my coffee on the way home. Yeah. They get themselves a coffee, and, and you've got bread. You've branched out. Yeah, yeah, we're getting uh, like the breads from uh, Benetton. Benetton's right here. Yeah, yes. So uh, they are waiting for their shop to open the first event. So we decided yeah. to just oh, help them, them out. Yeah, yeah, help them out. Now, now that's one thing I've heard about you at Mike as yeah. well is that you've been helping other people all the time. I mean, and and, and you, you, that's part of your part of your or the way you do things is, is, is you help as well. You know, it's always, it's, I think that's how I define humanity. You know? yeah, yeah. You must find it easy to help someone next to you. So. Yeah. That's what life's supposed to be, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and now, have you expanded? Have you got other shops? Yes, we do. Uh, we have got our container setup, corner 8 in Ukraine. 8th in Ukraine, okay. Uh, we have got a store as well, 17th Avenue, if you know okay. old Tony Supplies. Yes. We've got a shop inside there. Ah, Tony's Appliances, uh, Cat's yeah, Camera World. Yes, yes. We've got there. a shop okay. there. We've got a shop in Queenstown. In Queenstown? In Queenstown as well. Conte. 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 Yeah, a common. Conte. <laughs> and as well in Newton Park. Corner okay. Frank and Park Avenue. Okay, wow. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. amazing. And yeah. starting from, from really just uh, selling your Toyota. To, to building a little empire yeah. yeah, it's all thanks to the people, you know, they've been so supportive, you know, and yeah. we're quite grateful about it. Yeah, oh good, oh, good. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful to have met you and, and, and have, uh, have watched this journey because it's it's uh, it's inspirational for the young guys. I mean, have you got any any words of inspiration for, for the young guys starting out? A lot of, lot of baristas starting. Well. Yeah, but with coffee it's not about making money. Yeah. You must be passion driven. Yeah. So with passion, any obstacle you can just walk through it because you are passion driven. If you're money driven, you're never gonna make it in coffee. You're right. You're yeah. right in the end. Yeah. So about your coffees, you you do you have your own blend yet? Uh, I'd say we were quite privileged um, through savings. Of Whatever we were getting, we managed to buy our own roasting machine. A roasting machine? Which is right here. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So we do our own beans here. We create our own blend, and um, that's the coffee that we're serving here. Yeah. Do you any specific uh, Guatemala, Nicaragua? There's some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our blend, we, we use. Um, Colombia, Colombia. Salvador, is that quite a quite Guatemala, a and a little bit of Rwanda and Tanzania. Yeah. A, bit, a bit of African coffee says, yeah, 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 yeah. What is the in the taste profile? Do you, do you know the difference the taste? Because I don't, I don't know uh, how, how it works with the taste profiles. Well, you know, do you, do you just do you just do it uh, at a tasting session, or how do you how do you work it out? No, we always try to bring a balanced uh, taste and flavor profile into it. Okay. So if you had to taste our coffee, you find this lot of fruit, fruit nuts in it, but uh, as you finish drinking the coffee, at the back of your tongue, there yeah. must be like dark chocolate after taste that you get after that. The chocolate stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That sounds good. That's the strength in our coffee. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you roast it dark or light or medium? We've got different roast profiles. Okay. So each sing origin, we roast different and then we blend together. Put it together. Yeah. And your baristas, you train them yourself? Yeah, we train a lot of baristas in PE around. We also take kids from our, off the streets. We train them free of charge and we look job for them as well. Wow. Okay. Okay. That we've been doing for the past three years. And I can definitely say we produce about 50 baristas so far. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. Uh, and, and because it, it's, uh, like I've said before as well to the other guys as well, it's amazing. The, the, baristas, the barista job is the kind of job that, crea that can create something out of nothing. Thank you very much, Mac. Thanks so much. Thanks it's so much. It's a pleasure. And well done for what you've done. Amazing job. Thanks yeah. so much for having me on your show. It's a pleasure. Just yes, Mark. Mark. <laughs> okay, just, you know. <laughs> him to wink. <laughs> we asked him to wink. <laughs> he wasn't so good at winking. <laughs> no, Mark is he's an absolute inspiration. He, in is, he, he is definitely one of my favorite coffee people in yeah. the industry. Mark has put his heart and soul out in totally. the industry and entrepreneur he's, amazing he's yeah. such an inspiration yeah, for is. me in terms of what guys have achieved and yeah, yeah look mark so proud of you my brother <laughs> you've done so much i uh, hope you're watching and you're listening to yeah this absolutely i'm sure you will I'm you sure are you will. an inspiration to me and many other people 
I see uh, Gerald, Gerald asking how much does a latte cost in SA? I think it's anything from about 20 bucks to 20 to 30 bucks, 35 bucks. So generally with a latte compared to a cappuccino, a lot of people don't realize is uh -huh. cappuccinos are based upon ratio of coffee versus milk. Oh, right. Lattes are generally a little bit more expensive than cappuccinos because it's instead of it being one to four to six parts of milk, it's about one to eight parts of milk. Okay. So you're probably paying anything around 28 to 30 bucks for a latte okay. because you've got about... 100 mils more milk in it. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So, so the milk a cappuccino is more. would be a single shot in a 250 mil, where a latte would be a single shot in a 350 mil. Yeah, okay, okay. So you're paying that three, four rand more yes. for the milk. Yeah, so anything between, I would say, 20, 28 rand and, and 30 yeah, okay. bucks. Yeah. I see Nikki saying, amazing guy, I love my coffee. Indeed, is it? There, a lot of guys do it. I think it's a lot of the bikers going past there. It was so yeah. funny because he yeah. said to me, no, he, he's got, he had the colors, the colors of his shop were KTM colors, which is the motorbike colors. Yeah. And so he put a KTM sticker up and he said, all the KTM guys coming in. He says, he's awesome. always thinking of new plans. Oh, Mike, it's fantastic. Well done, Mike. <laughs> yeah. And uh, okay, so so I mean, we we pretty much we are getting towards the end of this uh, this this tasting, and I mean, and, and, and it's it's like a for you, it's, it's always been a it's been a passion, I know. Mm -hmm. And and um, you know, uh, is there anything that 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 really drew you to this coffee thing? Is there anything that that uh, that that ex still excites you as well? I mean, you still you've yeah. been doing it for so long. Yeah, look, this is my fifteenth year, um, and you know, I think I think. Trying to find the next thing that's going to motivate you, that's going to inspire you to want to be a better version of your current self. And I think for me, every step, um, I always, I'm not a PE born and bred boy. Yeah, okay. I'm from Durban. Okay. And no, I can hear that because you say is and fish. And in. And un. Yeah. And whole crest. All right. <laughs> I'm going to roast you next. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the first step for me was wanting to build and give back into my community. Yeah, yeah. The second step for me was, I, I love engaging with people and yeah. I had an opportunity to start writing for Perfect Daily Grind. Yeah. And for me, what it is, it's constantly um, encouraging me to do more and yeah. impart more and empower more. Yeah. But it also forces me to look at what's happening in the global industry yeah, as a yeah. whole. To look at what the coffee trends are doing around yeah. the world. So I'm constantly connected around the world. I'm, I'm, I'm talking with other writers in Canada, yeah. in Singapore, and it's so nice to see how the coffee culture globally has, has developed. Incredible. I, I, yeah. I know Gary was, was, was asking us in the break quickly about, yeah. about wine, because Gary's a wine mm. uh, fundi. Mm. And you've done some at, uh, hello, it's me, I think you've yeah. done some wine yeah. and, and coffee pairings. Does, yeah. does the, is it the same sort of taste profile? How, how do they... So yeah, well, without a doubt, if you, look at, if you look at a wine flavor wheel versus a coffee flavor wheel, there are so many similar attributes. With yeah. wines, you know, when we talk about wines, we talk about cultivars of wines. When we yeah. talk about coffee, we talk about varietals. Okay. So it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. about the type of cherry. Yeah. And you get all those different flavor balances, complexities, all those flavors. So, for example, I enjoy mostly a white wine along the lines of a Sauvignon Blanc, a Chardonnay, a yeah. Chenin Blanc. Okay. Those flavor combinations of wines, those varietals of wines, paired beautifully with coffee really? okay. because of acidity, yeah. dryness, bitterness. Okay. So bringing in the right combinations of coffee works really well. We did one tasting with Meridian yeah. at, at Hello, It's Me. Olga Hefner. Yeah, I've done... And Michelle, uh, Michelle Brown. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure the, the lady I work with, yeah. but obviously Diane at Hello, It's Me. Okay, I work yes, with yes, Diane yes. there. And then at J Bay Zebra Lodge, uh, yeah. just outside PE, I've done three tastings there using um, a combination of Dornier wines out of Cape Town and Edge Baston. Oh, lovely. And we had actually had the guy there uh, that was representing Edge Baston, and we did the, yeah. the, the tasting together. So we actually paired coffee, wine, cheeses. Okay. Wow. Um, oh, man, we used apple crumble. Oh, lovely. We used figs. I like we, a bit of apple crumble myself. Yeah, <laughs> so it was really, really good. Most of the tastings we actually do revolve pretty much around ingredients and coffee. So we'll, yeah. we did a one at Hello to Me where we used four different desserts with four different single Jeez. origin coffees. Lovely. And how the, the actual desserts flavors highlighted the flavors in the coffee yeah. and how the coffee highlighted the flavors in the dessert. Yeah. So it's interesting. It's all about taste balance. It's I all see about. Yeah. So Jeff Applewhite just up the road with his his B and B. Yeah, <laughs> love your passion. Thank you very <laughs> much, Jeff. Yeah. You know, it's so so that that whole. I mean, and and what what is the story? Do you do you drink wine first? Because everybody seems to drink. 
coffee after their wine to try and fix themselves up? Is it to, <laughs> look or being like Elvis Presley with the, the downers and the uppers? <laughs> well, after the first two wines and coffees, you know, I I I, I managed to stay focused in the first. Okay. Two. <laughs> By the third and the fourth one, you I really so don't get again anymore. <laughs> yeah. So the interesting thing is, it's combinations. It's finding that balance. So beforehand, the thing is, we have to taste. So. Yeah. We try and the coffee is at a specific temperature because yes. as the coffee is cool, they change. As the wine warms up because it's sitting in the open, think wine gets hotter, coffee yes. gets cooler. Yes, yes, yes. Now all those flavors change and then bringing those ingredients in. So in some cases, we would take a sip of coffee, have a taste of apple crumble, take another sip of coffee, it highlights something in the coffee. Yeah. Then you sip the wine yeah. and you've got a dryness in your mouth, but then you take a piece of fig and you sip <laughs> the wine and all of a sudden you've got a savoriness, you sip the coffee and all of a sudden the coffee tastes like chocolate. Uh, it's amazing how uh, your taste And changes. all those flavors come together, and that's where your palate comes into play. Understanding yeah. where sweetness is, uh, you know, where you, where you pick up sweetness. So when I taste coffee and I sip on it and I say to you, it's fruity, yeah. it's, you, you've got to kind of think, break down, what is fruity? Where yeah. would you taste fruity on the tongue? It would be sour, it would be yeah. acidic, it would be sweet. If it's grapefruit, it would be bitter. So like Mark mentioned, dark chocolate. Dark yes. chocolate is a very, very common attribute of, of coffee, coffee yeah. and Brazil specifically. Yes. Yeah. Um, it has, but when you roast generally darker, yeah. you get that darker chocolate cocoa okay. type finish. That you even get that dryness that you get off cocoa. When you when you roast dark a, a dark roast, I mean, so saying the French roast, um, we yeah. love a wine and coffee pairing. I think we must do one next. Let's do one. We'll make a plan. We'll make yeah. a plan. Um, but that, that dark roast is, is obviously called the French roast, isn't yeah. it? Um, but the, then the oils kind of come out to the surface of the bean. You can yeah. almost see the shininess. Yeah. Of the bean is that is that good or bad? I don't know. It's it it's well. I wouldn't say it's bad. Yeah. You, if you're roasting, for example, to go that dark, yeah, you're aiming at a specific method okay. of brewing. Okay. If you're going to now put a very very dark bean through a method like this, you're yeah. going to end up just with a very bitter coffee. Okay. So going very dark, you yeah. want to limit your extraction time. Yes. Bring that down, grind it finer, and okay. get more essence, more flavour okay. with with a, with a, with a nicer finish. If you, if you allow that to soak too long, all yes. those oils are going to draw out a lot of bitterness. You're going to end up with okay. a lot of over-extraction. All right. Oh. So, you know, the, the, there's one other thing that we've kind of missed out on, and, and that is the Arabica bean, mm. which is the most popular bean mm. throughout the world, right, of, of Arabica. And then you get the Robusta. And yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, I like a lot of Robusta, but it's very bitter. What are, you, what are your thoughts on the Robusta? Look, a lot of, um, of your Italian brands of coffee and a lot of people within South Africa use Robusta. Um, the b biggest difference is there's a massive price difference between yeah. the type of coffee. Robusta is much cheaper, much more hardy. It's, it's, it's hardier, it's more robust, it's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot more caffeine content yeah. in it as well. Okay, so it gives you more of a kick. It gives you more of a kick. And that's why a lot of your Italian brands use a slightly higher percentage of... Mm, uh, stronger, more stronger. Yeah. Put the hair on my chest. Yes, I forgot. Okay. So, yeah, you've got no hair. <laughs> um, but it, it, is, it can be a very pleasant coffee. But once yeah. again, using a higher percentage Robusta and brewing it through a filter machine wouldn't be yeah. a good thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. A, lot yeah. of, a lot of suppliers out there or a lot of roasters that would use Robusta would use it for a specific reason to add a specific dimension, okay. flavor, okay. Um, and possibly even help with from a cost perspective. Yeah. So remember, we also, as, ro I mean, as roasters, as coffee suppliers, as a coffee community, we want to try also deliver coffee at a decent price. Yes, yes, of course. So if we can bring the blend price down, yeah. but then you wouldn't sell a 50% Arabic or a 50% Robusta no. to a person that uses a filter machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, you know, okay. it, your target market's very important. Okay. So, I think in PE, we don't really... Yeah, I do the robust too much. We don't right? have a, a major... A but if you're looking for a bit of strong, a bit of whoo, extra mm, power mm, into your mm, coffee, then a bit of mm, robusta is always a good thing. Or whiskey. Oh, so a bit of whiskey. Is, it, is whiskey a good thing to mix with coffee? What, what alcohol do you put in coffee? Well, you can make... Uh, uh, basically coffee uh, um, martinis, if you martinis. want to call it that, where you use a bit of Kahlua, a bit of vodka. Kahlua. Yes, okay. And okay. You, if you shake it up, you get a really nice uh, crema that you get on the surface. Yes. I mean, you can use a variety. Whiskey pairs beautifully with it because okay. of, I think it's got a lot to do with, with whiskey. You've got a lot of that fermentation taste yes. that sometimes really goes well with, yeah, with coffee. Yeah. The whiskey's um, got a lot of flavor. I, mean, I, 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 I love a bit Frangelico. of whiskey. Oh, Frangelico. Very nice, sapore. Beautiful coffee. with coffee. Absolutely beautiful so, coffee. So, amaretto kind yeah, of thing as amaretto, well. Yeah, amaretto, yeah. 
Very nice. So there's nuts. Nuts. Yeah. nuts. nuts. Going back to nuts again. So remember once again, it's that flavor that you bring in, for example, of that specific alcohol. Yeah. But not the alcohol itself. It's the flavor. Yeah, it's the flavor, of course. That's bringing out a specific flavor in the coffee. Yeah. So that's why the flavored coffees do. Yeah. There is a place for them. Grappa. Yeah. Oh. Uh, very strong. Very strong in the very, grappa. Very strong, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, Sean, uh, it's it's been amazing. It's been a lovely, a lovely little coffee journey. Thank you for bringing all your stuff. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything we've, we've kind of left out. Uh, thank you to the guys who gave a little bit of coffee here as well. Um, uh, what was it, Chris? Uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan from, Ryan from Ryan. the Bean and uh, uh, Carl from Kyle. Bean Stalking. Thank you for Kyle, to Kyle. And of course, uh, I know we, there's, there's so many coffee, uh, great coffee places here. I yeah. mean, there's, there's Rock and there's the Vovatello. We yeah. haven't yeah. spoken about They've got yeah. brilliant coffee. Yeah. Um, these, these, these coffee uh, shops around town, are actually, they've all upped their game. You yeah, know? they have, definitely. We, we are... We really are spoiled in Port Elizabeth, yeah. not only from the fact of the level of coffee shops we have around town, but also th there's just the caliber of people. Yeah. The people are just amazing. The team, the team at Rock, the team at Volvatello, the, yeah. the team at even a local Wimpy or a yeah. Bean or, or anywhere. Yeah. Seattle's up the road here as well. Exactly. There's Urban so Express, many. of course, yeah. with Don and, yeah. and Angel. Uh, you know they, they've really all, all up their game so we've got we've got good choices out there guys mm. so don't be in a pleasure getting to know you as well Vivian I like your <laughs> comment a lot eh? uh, he likes it a lot eh? did you hear that oh. he's just as corny as you are <laughs> oh thank you so much Sean for coming it's been an absolute pleasure and, uh, and, and sure. brilliant to have you in the studio. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, coffee is a passion of mine, and so yeah. long may it last, young man. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> All right, we've got competition time now, so stick in your headphones because now it's going to get loud in here. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, so Simone Conradi, loving the Sumatran coffee. Indeed. We've got uh, the, the the Sumatran is uh, they've got their own um, their own uh, coffee shop there now. I see on the way as well. Yeah. There we go. I'm back on my microphone here. Yeah. All right, so now it's time for the competition. Of course, Fitch and Leeds, our amazing sponsor. Thank you, Fitch and Leeds and Spa. Uh, Fitch and Leeds have, have uh, kindly said that they would give the first person to guess the name of the song and the name of the artist in the drum cam. They will send you a, uh, the, well, who's that? Is that Griselle? All the way from Cape Town. All the way from Cape Town. She said, we have some top coffee shops in SAE. We do. Cape Town's got some great ones as well. I love, I love a bit of steampunk. So, um, so I love uh, Truth Coffee as well. Fantastic. Uh, that's, I love that stuff. Uh, coffee comes along with the whole, all the architecture and everything. Mike Barwood, great show. Thank you for the info and the passion. It's a pleasure. All right. So you can't win again. You can only win once, Vivian Trobeck. <laughs> So, I was gonna, I'm going to play a song, I'm going to play a song, and Fitch and Leeds, if you like Fitch and Leeds, Bashir, you better get onto your keyboard, because if you like that to put it put it together, then you're going to win a case of Fitch and Leeds. I'm going to head over to the drum cam, here we go, here we go. All right, nice and loud there, eh? all right, and uh, name, of the name, name, name of the song, the name of the artist in the comments, and you win. Ha-ha!
that is Bashir Brits. Here we go, we need to swap that camera over here quickly. I don't know why that, that's not, uh, not going. But thank you very much, Bashir Brits. You are the winner tonight. And we are going to send you <laughs> some Luki Tot. It's close enough, you know. It's close enough. Thank you for joining us on our show tonight. It's been fantastic fun. And thank you to Sean for popping on. It's been wonderful to have you on as well. And, uh, and we'll see you on Saturday. Where Saturday we have Jeff Claus. Jeff Claus! All the way from the Lynx coming to say hello to us. So don't miss out on Saturday. And we've got some interesting stuff happening on Saturday as well. Some new little things starting to come out of the woodwork. All right. So uh, thank you very much for joining us at Gino Spot. <laughs> hey, let's sit down. Coming out of PE town. Drink, find a shot. Never mind your liver. Get to Gino Spot. Gino Spot. Get to Gino Spot. Gino Spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle. And exercise your middle. Have a Gino shot. Gino shot. Get to Gino Spot. Gino Spot. Get to Gino Spot. Gino Spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle. And exercise your middle. Get to Gino Spot.